Hey guys. Just getting everything set up here. I think that looks pretty good. Let's refocus that though. And here come the kitties. How's everybody doing? I hear you, baby. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I had all these sitting here and she's rolling around on. I hear you. Now you're going to have to get down. You can't get next to the cords. And I got some um, treats. I got treats in Happy Mail. And uh, they know. They know there's treats and cat toys over there. <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing? Hi, Faithful. Thank you so much for the stamps, Faithful, to go along with the book she sent. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to show those, too. Hi, Kenny. Let's see. Nancy, Joey, Ray. Kenny, uh, Artful da Dabbler, Tori, uh, Nashua, Pamela, um, Hi Mystic Jade, um, let's see, uh, Skinny Cat, um, Hi Janet, uh, Donna, Teresa, Diane, I know I'm probably missing some people, so we're going to do some, uh, I'm going to show, I've added some of my I added, well, I actually added quite a bit. Is that light on? I actually added quite a bit of um, of my vintage materials that I bought from Jonna, Sister Woman, to my Jane journal. So I'm going to flip through my Jane journal today along with some other journals. I'm working in, I'm working in little journals. I got, and then we might do some sketching. I started doing sketching uh, in the color sketchbook well it's by color you know that we did last week so got lots of things to show and talk about plus i have happy mail hi mama four hi mary beth who else let's see hi jersey and uh i i did tweet a picture but i'm gonna uh, jan i might be late to your show today because i have to go to the post office i've got to get this out of my house i've got to get all the I spent almost all day Saturday doing getting my happy mail done. Where's the picture? Here. So I got to get all this stuff in the mail. <laughs> I worked on this all day Saturday. So um, I did make prints. I made big ones and small ones of the, um, and they turned out really good. I was really happy with them. I made prints, uh, different size prints of the Blue Jay. Here's the larger one, and here's the smaller one. So I did, um, I did get some nice prints made of those. Yes, I know. I get to the post office today, Janet. So I probably won't get to your show till about two because the um, the post office is closed until at lunch from twelve to one. So I can't even be there till one. So from one, you know, I'll probably get there right at one and um, and then get that stuff mailed and get back. And it's a rainy day. It's kind of yucky out, but it's supposed to clear up, I think, to, for tomorrow. So I'm, I'm glad it's not going to be rainy all week. Hi, G. Hi, Ian. And uh, so, yeah, I did. Uh, I did send all my mods one. I did send all my mods one. <laughs> Including you, Ian. You're in the stack of happy mail. All my mods get treats. Um, <laughs> I gotta treat, I gotta treat my mods. But anyway, so yeah, you you may not be able to see, but that's that's a lot of envelopes right there. <laughs> so thank you everybody that supports the channel. Thank you everybody for uh subbing and getting us over 25k. I am going to, I was gonna do it today. But I think I'm going to wait till next Monday. I wanted to wait till March to do the 25K um, uh, celebration. But I do have a giveaway. I do have some giveaway. So uh, it won't get in the mail today. <laughs> it won't get in the mail today. But I, I do have a couple things to give away. And uh, so anyway, 
So that's what I did most of uh, Saturday. And uh, I did get a walk in on Saturday. And uh, yeah. Hi, preppy, crafty girls. Just saying, Jonna. And I don't know if Jonna has any more of her kits available in her Etsy. But go to the preppy, crafty girl. And she sells kit vintage kits, vintage paper kits. And there's other little things, button and, you know, something, you know. Anyway, they're vintage kits. And um, she does uh, show them on our YouTube channel. But you have to check her Etsy shop to see what is still available. And uh, hi, Molly. Let's see who else. Yulia. Uh, I know I'm missing people. Darla. Thanks, everybody, for popping in. Uh, Fran on the edge. <laughs> Fran on the edge. I like that. Hi, Julie. You did a mass mail at work Saturday, but it was a happy mail. Oh, Julie. Oh, well, all my mods are getting one of the uh, getting a um, getting a uh, print of the Blue Jay. So I did make some of those, and I do have some happy mail to show. So if you're just joining us for the first time or just accidentally found us, thanks everybody for the thumbs up. Um, you spend uh, some time in the morning, you know, at the beginning of the show, saying good morning to people. Hi, Cheryl. Azure. Um, so if you um, if you don't want to hear happy mail talk, and if you don't want to see, you know, chit chat about, you know, good morning, then just slide that little bar past whatever you don't want to see. Hi, Eileen. And a happy Monday to you, too. I See, I love Mondays. I love being here with you guys on Monday. <laughs> I, I look forward to it. Well, I'm one of those people that actually look forward to Monday. <laughs> oh, so anyway, Janice, I know I'm missing people. So I am going to go through again my Jane Davenport. Uh, and now it's, it's Jane and Jonna. My Jane and Jonna <laughs> journal. My Jane and Jonna junk journal. Well, it's not really junk because it's it's just like combo of stuff. But my Jane and Jonna journal. Say that three times fast because I added some of Jonna's paper to this journal. So what it is essentially is a journal of all three of Jane Davenport's books. She has, well, she may have more than three, but this is three I know. Uh, two of her of her uh, larger books, and then one of her smaller inspiration prompt books. They're all in here. It started out that I took the uh, took the books apart. And I call it deconstructing. I deconstruct. <laughs> Hi, Nana. I deconstructed all three of her books, and I first I put them in a sketchbook in like one of those Michael's sketchbooks about that thick, you know, this size, and it it got two. It was too flared. It was too um, puffy, you know. So I took that journal apart and put it all in a three ring binder. So now it's all in here. And I did take these pages out of my Arteza paint pens. I did swatch those. So book. And I did make them here. This is where they go. This is where they go in the journal. And um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do a flip through it. I'm going to flip through this today. And so I'm I'm trying to get all my swatches in here. Now I don't have uh like my Prisma swatches in here. I have them swatched in other places. So as I come across those other swatches, I'm putting them in this book. So this is where my swatches will go. Um hi Hotty Popo. I think you're 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 BFFs with Jersey Crafter, if I'm not mistaken. I did stop by a couple of y'all streams for a few minutes over the weekend. Um, I, I don't usually make them live, but I try to get in there and, you know, see what you, what's going on. I got to go and see, check y'all out. Hi, Afro Sensible Sister. Morning. Um, let's see. Who else? Janice. Oh, I'm trying to make sure I try to um, say good morning to everybody. So this is one. This right here, John, is one of the things you sent me. I love that picture. So I put that in the inside front cover. So anyway, I, um, I'm going to flip through this. I'll show you, and I called it coffee and art journals in the morning because I'm going to show you. I don't have a lot done in these yet, but I, I'm starting. I have a couple pages ongoing. I have this one ongoing. I have this one ongoing. They're not done yet. <coughs> I'm 
journals like these guys, I really, it's kind of like my desk journals. Y'all seen my desk journals before. They're really never done. I'm always adding things to them. So um, we might go through that. Um, I might show one of my desk journals just because I like people to know how to do that. Let's see if I can reach one up there. Let's see if I can reach one. Ugh. They're on the top shelf up here because I'm not using these anymore. So let's see if I can. Is this one I want to show? Yeah, this one's probably as good as any. I got a couple I can show. Let's see. Maybe this one too. <clears throat> So um, I used to use uh, these leather journals that I got from Barnes & Noble. I used to use these, and it would take me about a year to fill one. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I think I've got six of these leather ones. Um, I'll, I'll kind of go through those a little bit just to deal what I mean by a desk journal. And uh, let's see. So I got Happy Mail. I got some giveaways. I got a new color book. I got um, stamps. Oh, and this is something I forgot to show. John sent me this. These are vintage um, metal letters. I think I might use these like as um, on a on at the beginning of my show where that shows there. S creations by CC Creations. She has three C's. And she has those on her show. And I said, oh, Jonna sent me two Ds. I don't have three Cs, but I got a double D. <laughs> so I might use my I might use my double Ds on my show. So Jonna sent me these. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I can resist. So anyway, Jonna sent me these metal D's and I'm not sure, Jonna, what are they from? <laughs> I know everybody loves that one. What are these from, uh, Jonna? Where, do you know what these come off of? <laughs> now my eyes are watering. I want to see, Jonna, where did these come from? <laughs> I know she got them at a flea market, but do you know what they were originally? <laughs> Kimberly goes, you can't go wrong with double D's. <laughs> um, I got double D's too, but not initials. <laughs> Baby girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The show's not for kids. I mean, I do try to keep it family friendly, but, you know, we're not advertising to our kids, you know, obviously. Um, so, hi, Laura. Let's see, who else am I missing? I found them at the, well, I know you probably found them at the flea market, but do you have any idea what they were originally? Because they're metal. So, anyway, they, Jonna sent them to me in my paper kits. <laughs> well, sweet. And then I want to show this. Um... So if y'all know, um, Faithful Mass sent us these, and I will be giving them away. Um, uh, you know, I'm like, not only once, <laughs> I'm not going to give them away all at once, but she sent me a whole bunch of the handmade collage books. I showed these last week if you want to see, if you want to see the uh, flip through of this book. And um, so the next day she sends me this envelope. Let's just make sure there's no addresses showing. She sent me this envelope here. Look at the back. And she had a, all these stamps in it with this cute little card. With this cute little card of a cast. That's going to go in my fibs journal. I got to get back on my fibs journal. My, <laughs> my, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Hi, by the way. Um, because I need to get to work. So she sent me all these stamps. So thank you so much, Faithful. She stamped me up. And some internationals, some um, dinosaurs, and I love these. I love the astronaut one. So thank you so much, Faithful. So considerate. Faithful, so considerate when it comes to stuff like that. So thank you so much, Faithful. And I love this. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do something with that. Um I got, let's see, what else was I going to show? Okay, so I got Happy Mail. Now, if y'all, some of y'all may know Sharon L. Um, I follow, you know, follow her on Facebook and Twitter and other places, but she's never here. And she is going through some health issues. So if y'all are prayers, if y'all are prayers, if y'all pray, 
uh, keep uh, Sharon, uh, Sharon Ellen, your prayers for her health. Um, she sent me some happy. And if y'all know, she's always sending me post-it notes and cat treats. Well, she did not disappoint again. So this is the stuff that she sent. She said, and the cats know this stuff is in here. So another <laughs> big thing of cat treats. And then I, I got to admit, I had to pull one of each off of the card. So they each already have a trick. They already have a toy. I had to pull a toy off of each one of these. So she sent the um, skitter critters and the fish flop. <laughs> they love these. I mean, these toys are all over our house. It looks like a giant. Our house looks like a giant playpen. It does. These little cat toys are everywhere and they love them. And they love it when Hubster throws them and they chase them and retrieve them and bring them back to him. So they're like retriever cats. And then she sent these mini post-its <laughs> and um, she sent these. I, I was, I, I, you know, I can't say I'm ever low on post-its, but I can always use more post-its. I know, wasn't it sweet? And uh, so, um, yeah, I, I go through the post-it. So let's see if I can, I haven't tried to take any out here yet. Let's see here. I'm going to get a green one, the green ones. So, um, yeah, I love me. Some, that's, I live off of post-its. If I have any ideas, no taking out post-its next to the bed. I post it's everywhere. So if I need to write down a note or an idea or something, I, they, they first go on post-its. They don't, they don't necessarily stay on post-its. Sometimes when I accomplish the task, then I get rid of the post-it or I'm transferring those, I'm transferring those um, notes into other journals. Hi, Teresa, Sharon Soon. Uh, I know I'm missing people coming in. Cheryl, Kim, Al, Pamela. And and she knows me too well. She knows these are my two favorite pens. And I, I had to say I busted into them. I was running. I needed. I had to bust into my Sharpie pen. These are the pens I, I journal with. When I'm writing, journaling, note taking, it's a Sharpie pen, not a Sharpie marker. And these these Sharpie pens do not bleed through. They don't bleed through anything. So that I found. So um, so I love my Sharpie pen. So I did have to bust into these because I needed I needed one. And uh, so she sent me a couple packs of that. And then she sent me Sharpie, the ones that I use here on the show so that you can see what I'm showing. And I did bust into that too. <laughs> so I already shared with the timing because I needed to, um, I needed those at the moment. So... <clears throat> We set those over here. And uh, so, yeah, and the cats have been trying to get in that box to get more of these. Not like they need these. They already have one. They have, they. I don't know how many toys they have around the house. But they knew that these were in that box, Sharon. They knew. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, they'll, they'll probably be in here to jump up here and get those in a little while. So let's see. I know I'm missing people. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for the thumbs up. And again, keep sharing in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you, guys. Um, let's see. What else do I have to go through? I think I'll keep these little post-its right up here because, um, yeah, I use them all the time. All right. Yeah, they are. Well, they can sniff them. They can smell them, uh, Artful Dabbler, uh, Tori. Yeah. Okay. So let's put this to the side. What else do I need to show? Um, again, I did make prints. I did make prints of the... Um, I, I have a big one here so you can see it. Um, I went over to Office Max and uh, they always do a good job. And it's not like high gloss paper, but it's... Look how nice it turned out. Didn't that turn out good, guys? I was really happy with it. So I got both sizes made of that. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, the only thing that I think I have as far as a haul to show you, I only got one book over the weekend, and I'm blaming Colleen. Let me get a sip of coffee here. Colleen and Kathy, I'm not sure which one it was. When Colleen Scrap Chick and Kathy Berg do their shows together, and they're always, that glare is bugging me. 
let's just move it off camera. <laughs> I don't have my uh, diffuser on the little light today. Um, when they stream together, sometimes I forget who showed which thing. But anyway, one of them showed this posh coloring book uh, inspired by nature, Marjol Bastine. Now I have a whole bunch of Marjol Bastine's books. She's been, she was a Hallmark artist, uh, card designer for years. I'm talking like, I think I first saw her like 20 years ago and you can follow her. I think on Instagram, I think she's on Instagram. I never look for her on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook a whole lot, but anyway, um, so this is the kind of, this is the kind of uh, work she does. You'll probably recognize it. She's, she, she has flowers, but she always incorporates supplies, art supplies, uh, some kind of, you know, something else in it. Colleen's halls are so expensive. I know, Eileen. Well, Eileen, you're one to talk, the enabler elf. You enabler elf, you. <laughs> So anyway, this is the kind of um, work that she does. And it, I'm sure you recognize it in uh, from Hallmark cards because it's been around forever. She's been around forever. Yeah, I have a couple of her large. I have some of her uh, bird books and, and her larger book downstairs, though. Those are those are some some not all my books made it into the next room when I shuffled everything. I do have a lot of art books downstairs in the library that weren't up here in this in the art room and didn't have to be moved three different times. <laughs> but anyway, I should pull out some of her books to show you. Um, but this is the kind of work that she does and see like, look, look at all the paint brushes and there was watercolor and maybe pencil in there too. I, I forget her techniques now because uh, it's been a while since I've uh, studied her or looked at, at her. So um, anyway, I, I did start one page. I did start one page. And so she faintly has, and, and depending on the color, like this is it printed in light purple, this one is printed in light yellow. So it kind of, this one's in light green. So it kind of fades away as you work on it. Hi, Kathy A. Um, let's see. This one, this one was your fault. Okay. Kathy Arbor said this one was her fault. Okay. I thought it was Ka Colleen Kathy uh, Burke. Okay. So this one is Kathy Arbor's fault. And by the way, if you don't follow Kathy Arbor, she does a show every Thursday at 1 Eastern and does drawing techniques and a little of everything. Last week she painted, so but she's always drawing. And so this one was her fault. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> we'll blame you. And uh, so anyway, after I saw it on that it was on your show, I uh, ordered it. And um, so as you can see, so it's like this one's light green. And then this one's in purple so that you can uh, practice. I It's thin paper, guys. I don't know that I would recommend watercolor. It will buckle if you try to do it on watercolor uh, with watercolor. I mean, buckling doesn't bother me, but it does bother a lot of people. This is very, I don't know if it's create this. I, I don't know if it's create space paper, but it's very thin, very thin paper. I would not recommend doing watercolor. I recommend pencil, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use pencil. Uh, you may be able to use some, um, where, where are mine that I just had out? You may be able to use some, um, you know, super tip, uh, the Crayola super tip markers. If you're not overly watery with them, you know, you may be able to use those. Kathy, have you tried to do anything in this book yet? Did you just use pencil? Let's see, who else am I missing? I know I'm missing people. Victoria. Uh, Karen G, Coloring UK. I know I'm missing people coming in. Uh, guys, make sure two things. Make sure you have it on live chat and make sure if you talk to me, put it in caps. Okay. I hope Pacola's okay. I haven't seen Pacola. Pacola's usually here by now. Not yet. It's on my long list. Okay. Yeah, I know. We all have the, well, I'll show you how far I got on this one. Um, so anyway, this one's done in like a light magenta. So that it kind of will detract from anything you do on it. This one's in brown. But look at those. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Her art is stunning. Oh, she is here. Oh, there she is. I'm sorry, Pacola. I just missed you coming in. Thank you, Pacola. 
<clears throat> um, so I did start one. I don't know where it is exactly. Oh, here it is. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of following the colors. And I just did a light base coat, a base coat with Prismacolor, just to, just to identify, just to find the colors, right? <clears throat> so that's as far as I got. I haven't done any shading. I just did a base um, of, of the purples. That's as far as I got. And uh, so I figured that this might be the best way to start. Start with the lightest color in each section. You know, the lightest yellow, purple, blue. Start with the lightest colors, green. <coughs> and lay down a base coat. Lay down a base coat of those light colors. You could probably do it in pastel too. <clears throat> Let me get a sip of coffee, guys. And then start building up your shading. Yeah, it is a good book for reference, too. Well, I have a, I have some of her other books, Kathy. And I, like I said, she's been around for a long time at Hallmark. Um, she was like one of their premier artists for a lot of years. <clears throat> My Hallmark closed, so I don't know if she's still in Hallmark stores or not. You know, most a lot of those stores close because everybody goes online to shop. But look how beautiful. And she has larger books out. And... Um, so I just want to do a little flip. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I should have. I didn't bring up any juice. So I'm gonna have to go run down and get me some cold, something cold to drink. <clears throat> but she was a very um, famous artist at uh, Hallmark, and you, like I said, you can follow her on Instagram. She's she's still on the, in, she's still around online. She's not like she doesn't post like every day or anything like that. But she has a beautiful garden. So anyway, this is Posh Coloring Book Inspired by Nature, Marjol Basting. Okay, so if y'all like that. All right, let me run downstairs before I do any more uh, show and tell. Let me run and get some cold juice, guys. <coughs> Change in weather always does my voice in, and it rained overnight. Um, okay, so what we're going to do today, and anybody that I miss coming in, Joe, Kim, I think Cat and Paste, anybody else coming in. So what I'm going to do today is, oh, I can't stand the glare. Something's got to go there. Something's got to go there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I'll pull my desk journals there. I'm going to show some desk journals. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to show you my Jane Jonna journal. <laughs> <coughs> so this this what this journal is is like I said earlier is three of Jane's books. Two of her I think one's called Girls. I forget the name of them, and I don't have the covers I because I took the journals apart or the books, a sketchbook, journal, not sketchbook, journals. I took them apart and deconstructed them into an art journal, into one of the, you know, the Michael's, you know, this size sketchbook. Took it all apart and put those journals in there. Took those books apart, washi taped them in, but it got so fluffy I took that apart and put it in a three ring binder. So as you can see, it's pretty thick. It's on these D rings, pretty thick. So I'm going to flip over to the front. And so I know I showed this to you guys a while back. It hasn't been that long ago, but I, I've, I'm going to show it again because I added some more stuff. So, and I'm going to use this. Just for ideas, I'm going to use it for, oh, i got to put something on that glare. I'm going to use it for, um, you know, i got all these journals sitting here piling up. I'm going to use it for ideas and also for um, <clears throat> 
swatches. I couldn't think of the word swatches. Thanks, Pacola. And thanks guys for the thumbs up. So we're going to do a giveaway today. I'm going to do a surprise giveaway. Not, not, in, not necessarily in conjunction with the 25 K that'll be next week. So be look, if you're watching this video, be aware that next week, probably on Monday, this is what we're going to do next Monday. You'll leave a comment on that video next Monday, and we'll do a drawing on Wednesday, two days later. I'm, I'm not holding over, uh, um, you know, a giveaway for more than that because, you know, I don't want thousands. Well, I mean, that'd be nice, but, you know, <laughs> people commenting. So not on today. I mean, you can comment. Comment today if you like the video. Don't get me wrong. Comment. We don't get a, when you do live shows, you don't get a lot of comments because everybody comments during the live show right? We're talking here. So few people from here, you know, go and comment on the comments because we've been talking for four hours, right? Three and a half. And so, um, but feel free, feel free. Oh, oh, good, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, so Sharon, so where are you from? Welcome to the, I don't remember seeing you before. Um, Esca, Esca, po, oh, I'm not going to try to say it. Rosa. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> Let's see. Joe, use three ring binders for all your color pencils, watercolor brushes, easy get to. Yeah. Well, my Society of Idea Collectors, I don't have the picture right here in front of me. I could dig it up. But um, if you've seen my Society of Idea Collectors, almost all my information, journaling, and ideas are in three ring binders. I can't even tell you. Well, I could. I could turn around and count them all. <laughs> How many binders I have full of ideas and things. Um, so this one's going to be more for my swatches and just, you know, all around doodling, note taking, collecting, you know, it's, it's not anything specific. You know, sometimes you just need a book just for no reason, just to add whatever the heck you want. You know, cutouts, magazine cutouts. You could use it as a combo glue book. I have tabs here that I'm going to uh, divide things up. These are paper, I mean, uh, paint swatches from hardware store. So just use whatever. Make, have one book that's a whatever book. Oh, well, welcome, Sharon, in the UK. You're, you were a lurker? Well, welcome to unlurking. <laughs> We love our lurkers too, but I'm glad people come out of lurk lurk mode. I was going to say lurk load, lurk mode. Uh, so let me just start real quick by talking about having some kind of a journal, some kind of a journal that you, um, I, I call it a desk journal, where you just throw in leftover paints, leftover uh, magazine stuff. And then you can go back in. This is just a little thing I have in here for. Then you can go back in. Let's see, which way should I go? This way. I still got that glare there from, the, let's see, let's put that there. There we go. This, I don't have my light diffuser on this lamp. I should just move it, I guess. Um, <clears throat> might as well keep track of what I have so I don't double order. That's good too. I, I If I buy something like, when uh, all the distressings went on sale, I took a picture of all the ones I have so that when I go back, when there's another sale and I buy one or two more, I look at my photo on my phone and see which ones I already have so I don't rebuy. But either, whatever works, you know, whatever works. Um, I'm usually on the fly buying. So <laughs> I, I, if I don't have it on my phone, I wouldn't have it in a, you know, wouldn't have the book with me. So um, anyway, just having a place, and this one was from, I know I have a date in here somewhere, but these are older ones. These are older journals where I would just throw in whatever, some pictures and just whatever, um, little scraps of um, leftover, leftover stencil that I used, you know, paint on the stencil. Yeah, fluffy. <laughs> I didn't bring down fluffette. Um, but anyway, uh, leftover stencils, leftover pieces of whatever. And then I'll go in, if I have leftover paint, I'll flip to a page that needs that color and add that color to it. And, uh, and so it's just a place to use up whatever's sitting on your desk. So that's why I call it a desk journal. And this one, you know, and I went through about one a year. About one a year is what I averaged. And I have six of these. So 
um, maybe more, but six of these leather ones anyway. And then sometimes I'd go in and, and like work on a page or something. But for the most part, it's just, you know, if you just get uninspired, you don't know what to do. You can just kind of flip through. Maybe you'll get a color combination idea. Maybe you'll get, okay, that one's kind of stuck at the top. Um, maybe you'll get just a little, you know, you got a little abstract painting, something, something going on that might inspire you. Uh, so, but if you have something like this, and it doesn't have to be a leather journal, doesn't have to be a leather journal from um, Barnes and Noble. It can be just whatever kind. It can be a composition book. It's just some place to throw your leftover paints, your leftover um, images, you know, especially if you do collage. You always, hi, Colleen. Uh, if you do collage, you always have a lot of leftover scrap bits. And uh, oh, there's an old picture of Boo. <laughs> She's 17 now, so that shows you how old some of this is. Oh, uh, let's see. So stencil bits and just scrape, scrape, leftover scrape paint. Uh, just some things glued in. There's a couple of nothing. And this is what the paper looks like without anything on it. And uh, and also, and I know I've said this before, that one's, no, I think I glued that on there. Um, I've said this before. If you work in some kind of journal like this, you want to work some in the back, some in the front. Some in the back, some in the front, because otherwise your binding will warp. The spine will warp. But if you work front, well, you can't even see it. If you work front to back, then some from back to front, then some in the middle, then you'll, um, then you can uh, not warp the spine. So there's one there. Let me find a place to put it. Here's another one. So they're pretty fluffy. You can see where I'd never got to those pages. I worked some in the front, some in the back. And I didn't finish that much of this book. But I was doing like one a year. This one's 2012. So this one is 2012. And again, it's just all kinds of little scrap bits and whatever. Uh, this one I went back and kind of worked on a worked on a scene. Uh, with and it's all craft paint. All this is craft paint, guys. There's another one. I put a little tie. Called this one Mirage. Um, I really like this. See, the, there's a little cave right down there. You see the little cave right down there. So, um, uh oh, color shift, color shift. <laughs> so anyway, you can just go in here and just uh, you know whatever's left little leftover bits. And if you have it handy, you'll use it. If you don't have this handy, if you don't have it sitting where you're going to use it, you won't use it. Oh, thanks, Colleen. This is just, like I said, this is just my sitting on the desk journal. And, um, and then, and you know, and then when you're just sitting around, you don't say, what do I do? Just pick it up and go find a page and, and work on it. You know, make, build a little world out of whatever little scraps and scrapes. Uh, smack and dragon, Janet. Janet, smack and dragon. <laughs> those backgrounds there, those painty backgrounds. Uh, so anyway, you can kind of just see little stencils, little this, a little that. <laughs> so, uh, but have something like this where you can you can play in it. Haven't peeked in this journal for a yeah, we haven't we haven't peeked in this one for a while. So um yeah. And then just go in there and draw on it and, and add more paint. Um, you know, just uh so here's a just a couple different ones. Um again. So I'm titled today's show Coffee and Art Journals because I've got a whole bunch of different journals that I'm showing and working in. And then I figured that then we would do some sketching by color. Uh, you're teasing my child. <laughs> you can, Janet, have, let's, let's be honest. Have you tried this? And I know, guys, and, and oh, I'm sitting on my foot. Ugh. 
And I'm going to be honest here. I know that a lot of people like, let's just say for, I'm going to use Jean as an example. because She's not here. <laughs> you know, there's some people that don't like messy. They don't like getting paint. You know, I, I might have finger painted half of this. Um, people don't like to, you know, be messy. They like, and I know Janet's beast is very neat, very organized, very Janet. And that's okay. So if you don't like doing this kind of journal, then just have, have one where um, you're going to draw on rather than paint in, you know, something like that. Although I got to say, Janet has gotten messier since uh, Eileen. <laughs> Eileen always makes Janet do messy stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you do. Eileen won't let me. So uh anyway, see you look a little cat sketch, just little, just little whatever, you know. But I, you know, being a collage artist and mixed media, I love doing this. I love having combos ready to go. And that's what I'm doing in my two Arteza books. I filled this art. I'll show you. I'll, I start with all kinds of just glued in stuff. And then I might go in and turn it into, this is one I was working on yesterday. Um, just, you know, with leftover, you know, pieces of stuff. So, um but um, again, I quit working in these particular ones. What I would do is I'd work in it for about a year and then I'd get a new one and then I'd start another year worth. And uh, not that I can't ever go back to these. I've done that before on the show. I've gone back and um, worked in these books before. <clears throat> Leftover paint, you know, and inks and, and smack and dragging it. So, <clears throat> what products do you use to keep your hands clean after finger? Usually just have baby wipes handy. I use a lot of baby wipes because I also use baby wipes to blend and make mist. I use baby wipes as, as a paintbrush. But my, I don't care if my hands get really messy. I just, if the paint, it's just craft paint. The only thing that really is hard to get off is matte medium. Uh, matte me, golden matte medium is kind of hard to get off your hands. But other than that, the paint, acrylic paint will wash off. I just let it dry. <laughs> I just let it dry on my hands. Turtle watching the space launch. Oh, oh, there's a, is there a space? Oh, oh, you're, oh, yeah, that's what this is. Yeah. Cape Canaveral, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what that is. Oh, there's a Joycey. Look, Joycey, whirling dervishes. That's what my husband calls me. He calls me his whirling dervish. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so some of these just have some scribbles and stuff like that on here. Some just have some bits started. Leftover collage. <clears throat> leftover collage bits, leftover paint. I'm telling you guys, if you have one of these journals like this, it's just so freeing. And then you can do whatever you want on it. Now, here's where those few pages in the middle that I didn't do anything on. Um, see, look, isn't that fun? I love this page. So, again, desk, I call them desk journals. You can call them, you know, you can name them. Give them a name. <laughs> There's a lot of pages in them. And this is just scraped on with a palette knife. If you have leftover paint left in your what your project, just pick that up and skin. Now make sure it's dry. One of the things you do have to do, if you're, you're scraping down paint in these journals, either heat gun it or let it dry because otherwise you'll just glue the pages shut. You'll glue them together. You'll glue them shut. This is one of my all time pages. I love this page just like it is. It is one of my, I don't know what it is about it. I just love this page. Love this page. I say that every time. 
So yeah. Just finish flipping it now. Here, we're almost done. I like this one too. This one I liked. One of the things I liked about this is her dress and the column are like the same. You know, it's like the same thing. It made made me think that the the designer used architecture to design this dress because it's so architectural. And when you have a column standing right next to it, you can really tell. And this one. Two things I liked about this page. This page is, I called ponytails because uh, for obvious reasons. But this one, I, I love this because it always makes me, reminds me, anytime you're doing any kind of collage in a magazine, if you tear something out, look at what it lands on. So when I tore this page apart, one of these faces was behind the other just accidentally in the magazine. Do you know what I'm saying? So when I tore, let's just say I tore his face out to use, her face was right there. So it doubled the face like that. That is magic to me. That is collage magic right here. I love this page <laughs> because it just represents the magic of, of collage. Do you use gloss medium to make them shine? Um, the only time I glow, I um, oh, I gotta, I'm sitting on my foot. The only time that I um, me, I do use gloss uh, varnish, but the only time I varnish my pages is if it's an individual page, not in a book, or if it is my abandoned books, which I have what I say 15 or 16 abandoned books I'm working in. Those eventually get varnished. Let me see if I can pull one. Let's see. I don't want to get sidetracked more than. I already do. Let's see. Abandoned places here. Because I do have one varnished here in the front of front of my abandoned places. Let me show you that here. Let me finish this one here. So, yeah. So these are what I would call my desk. And the only ones that I really varnish. Because those are just play for me. I don't varnish those because they're just. Let's get the color back here. They're just play. But here's what in my abandoned places. Let me show you one I have varnished. So when I'm completely finished with them, I varnish them. Okay, but I don't, don't varnish anything until you're done. Because once you varnish them, you can't, you, well, you could sand and there's things you could do, but you really don't want to. <laughs> don't varnish till you know your page is done. So, and I have done flips of these. Is there anyone that really hasn't seen any of the abandoned places where I um, uh, alter books of abandoned places? This one was 2016. I'll just show you one example here. Because I think I have most of my books I have duplicates of so that I can show the before and afters. Let's see. All right. So this one, this page... This page started out as this. Okay, this is what it started out as. So I started with this and turned it into this. Okay. And and I did, well, I'll show you. I'll just show you a couple. Let me let me pick a couple of my favorite ones. I do like this one. I've tried to mark them. So when I want to show you the before and afters. I have them marked so they're easy to find because otherwise I'm trying to dig through, trying to find them all. And it's still sometimes a little tricky. Okay, so this was what I started with. This right here. And turned it into this. Those worlds are being bombarded up there. So let's see. Let me pick, I'll pick a couple other because this one is my favorite book. And Kieran Connolly, who is the who is the um, author of this book, 
I have actually sent him, this one was a simple one. I've actually sent, I tore a page out of one of the books and uh, sent it to the publisher, Amber Publishing in the UK. And they like, they, they like that I do this. So, and I always get full credit, give full credit to any altered book. So this one was a simple one. So all I really did, look, I didn't do a lot to this one. I added the sides and did the, the ghost there. Or spirit, if you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Okay, here's this one. See, See if I'm trying to flip right to them so that. Okay, so here's what this one started. Wait for it. <laughs> this. You turn into this. This one's not varnished. If it's not shiny, it's not varnished. Can we clarify sidetrack the same as. Yes, yeah, sidetrack is the same as a rabbit trail. But a rabbit trail is purposeful. I don't know. Is a sidetrack purposefully done, Ian? <laughs> My rabbit trails are purposeful. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorites, too. I say that about so many of them. Oh, this one's my favorite. No, wait. No, wait. This one's my favorite. Okay, so here's what this one started as. With, and, you know, see the text and everything? So I, I get rid of this. I paint it out. See, I paint it out. And then this is what it turned into. <laughs> Thanks, Jersey. Uh, let's see. Let me find. I'll, I'll just pick a couple more that are my favorites. And some of my favorites aren't even in this book. I'm working on 15. I think it's 15 different books. I'm working on 15 different books at the same time. Let's see, where's that one? Here's. So um, this one is just, this is just one of my, I really love this one because it was my first abandoned book that I worked in. Let's see, do I have that? Where's that? Okay, it's like three pages over. Let's see. Okay, where's that one? So this is what we started with. And then we turned it into this. This one's quite busy. <laughs> well, you got to start small, Fran. And, um, you know, I mean, when you do collage for... I don't even want to say how many years, but you do it for a lot of years. And um, this guy's going in here somewhere. So this one have a lot done to it. I stuck him in this book because I want him in this book at some point. All right, let's see what else. Um, let me go to my tabs here. Here's, let's see. Oh, this one is varnish. This is another one of my favorites. Let me get to her. Come on, where is she? I'll show you the before of this one. I really like this one. Okay. And I, I kind of had a vision of this one when I started. When I saw this right here, I knew I wanted this to be in space. I knew I wanted there to be a bridge, a bridge in space right there. So that kind of just inspired the whole world. Yeah, this is reverse collage. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I think I'm the one that coined that term back when, um, because we did reverse collage. The first time I, I called it reverse collage was on Ustream about nine years ago. When we were doing a, a during a, doing a reverse collage in a book, uh, a travel book, and I still have that book. But anyway, uh, so this was um, this was like a bridge in space in my vision, and so that was the main thing I wanted to convey was that bridge in space right there. And then I added her. I don't add a lot of people, and I say this all the time too. I don't add a lot of people because I want you to be the person in the world. You are the human. You are the living thing. <laughs> you know, you are the viewer and you're the one in the world. But occasionally I'll put a person because like she needed that 
her uh, magic feather wand was doing this right here. So I did put a person in this. Thank you. Thank you, Devin. All right, let's see. This one started out as this and then turned it into this. And this one's okay. I did a little, the background's a little quick. But it's, you know, not all of them have to be as loved. All right, I do love this one. <laughs> so this one started out. Here's this one. Again, I saw a bridge. And these little um, huts look like, he look, this one looked like it, it's a hut turned over on its side. Or like an umbrella. It's like a hut umbrella turned over on its side. And it looked like he was metal detecting. And uh, this is a deserted, let me read what it says. This is in Cyprus. At a glance, this might just look like any out-of-season beach resort. But no tourist have visited Var Varosha for more than 40 years, a Greek Cypriot resort. Varosha was sealed off by Turkish forces after a brief war between the island's Turk and Greeks that erupted in 1974 and divided the country. The Turks held on to Varosha, hoping to use it as a bargaining chip in negotiation with the Greeks, but the discussions never happened. And today, Varosha remains locked up, deserted, and crumbling. So anyway, this looked like a bridge. That looked like a bridge to me, so that's what I turned it into. So I turned it into a bridge. Thank you, Peggy, for the super chat. Thank you so much from your favorite lurker. You're such a, thank you so much, Peggy. Peggy, if you email me your address, I will send you, I will send you out a um, happy mail. I'm going to write you down here, but you have to email me and I do not share your addresses. Just FYI. Uh, I do not share anyone's addresses with anyone, not even the mods. We don't share addresses. We're, we're very uh, good about that. Um, okay, well, let's see. Mr. Nice Guy needs to go go sit in the corner with the other kindergartners. Somebody um, give uh, Mr. Nice Guy some milk and graham crackers. Okay, so anyway, this is, <laughs> this is what I turned this into, and this world's exploding down here. So this world's exploding. You can make up a lot of things going on, you know. I try to leave it up to people to see what they want to see in it. <laughs> so anyway, from this to this. <coughs> Let's see here. <laughs> this one just has a bunch of nebulization going on. We just nebulized, just nebulized this one. And let's see, I'm still working on this one. I never feel like, you know, you don't have to finish them all at one point. This one's finished and varnished. Um, let's see here. Okay, so in this one, the only thing I really wanted to make sure of is to keep this little guy right there. See that little guy right there? That was in the photo. And I wanted to keep him. So I built a world around that little guy. <laughs> so this is what we started out with. He was so lonely down there. He was a lonely little guy sitting down there. So I had to give him a world to live in. So that's this is the <laughs> this is the world, and it is it is varnished. All right, let's see. Just got one or two more I'll show in this book. Then we're gonna flip through the Jane book. Okay, so this one started out as this. And this is what we turned it into. Okay. But I love, I love Kieran Connolly's abandoned book. So this one. Oh, I love Salvador Dali, Ian. Well, not him necessarily as a person, but I loved his uh, vision. Okay, let's see. So I take the abandoned places and give them life. Give those places some life. 
Okay, I got two more, I think. This one. Again, there's a person in this one. And that one's not done. I think that's probably about all. That's just to give you all an idea. So if you have one of each and some of the supporters of the channel have generously given me du duplicates of, of many of the books I only had one of so I can show the befores and after. And um, so let's see, I have abandoned places, abandoned palaces, abandoned castles, abandoned civilizations, ab abandoned castles, abandoned sacred places, forgotten heritage, abandoned America, abandoned theme parks, and secret cities of haunted beauty, and World War II abandoned, or World War, I'm, I'm not sure it's World War II, or just World, or Wars, abandoned. So um, anyway, all right, so let's see. Uh, I think I'll next, I'll go ahead and flip through my Jane journal. It's really puffy here because you can see it's very thick. Now I'm going to just kind of do it. I'll just kind of try to read, chat, and flip. So what this is, again, was three of Jane Davenport's books of ideas, inspiration. She wants you to doodle and sketch and draw and paint in her books. And then she had the one of the third one was a small one of inspiration and prompts. Well, I've deconstructed them all and they are now in here. They, they've been uh, washi taped to other pages. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just going to flip. Now, I, I also want to say that I've added every few pages for some extra stability, some cardstock that I like, some heavier cardstock to give it a little more stability. And, and that's especially good now because I have I'm also adding vintage stuff. So I've got to cover this up. Let's here, let me take this out and put it on top because there's a glare. Well, that's not much. Well, it's a little better. There's just a glare from that plastic. Um, so Jonna, I bought two of her uh, vintage paper kits. And uh, so a lot of the stuff I've added in here is vintage stuff. Hi, Katrina. Mary Berry, Artful Dabbler. Yes, it is a chunky monkey. <laughs> it's very chunky. And so, Johnny, you'll probably recognize as I go through. So tabs, you can always make tabs. Maybe I need to prop that up just one little height because it's just a little bit of a glare there. Maybe that's just enough of a prop there. I'm trying to keep the color. And um, paint chips are good to make tabs with. So I double tabbed a couple of them and these are going to, I'm going to use these for dividers. I'm going to divide some stuff up. Like this is from Jonna's kits. Jonna. Oh, let me show you the cover too. I used two of Jonna's little, um, what do you call the pressed letters? I put book lover and inky well on the cover there, Jonna. And then on here I put collage artist. So Jonna had punched those out on her paper label, label maker, her label maker, and had them in my kit. So I put the collage artist there. I put Inky Well and Book Lover on there. So, all right. So the, and, and I'm also using this for a, um, I'm also using it for a swatch book. So I'm trying to gather my swatches and put them in this book as well. Uh, yeah, well, I, I think... Another thing that I did with this is many of the pages have are are attached to one sketchbook page. So like this one right here, and I did reinforce them. I put, uh, if you can't see it, it's got a white reinforcer on it. I ran out of the color ones. <coughs> so I, I started using white reinforcers. The reason I'm using the reinforcers is because almost every page, not every page, but most of the pages have like four or five or sometimes six pages attached to the one base page by washi tape. So this was the book the, that I took it out of. But in the meantime, all these other pages are washi taped in. And it did take me a minute. I'm not going to lie. There's three books here that I took apart of Jane's books, took them apart, and they are all washi taped in. Back and front. 
because I don't trust the washi tape to hold a page in unless it's on the front and the back. So it did take a minute. So I've got, this is all one page here. All this right here, this is her small book here. This is her inspiration prompt book, okay? And they're all on one, this whole thing was on one page. So you need to reinforce it. Uh, you need to uh, add reinforcers if you're going to add multiple pages. Yes, it was a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work, Jonna. Um, so again, here, this is all on one piece of paper. All, there's one, two, three things attached to one piece of paper. So you need to have, this has got reinforcements on it. So, because when you're going through a chunky book like this, you're, you're going to be pulling out. Oh, wait, there's more on this one. Okay, let me take one out to show you as an example. Okay, so here's one section. And it's got one piece of paper holding everything together. And on this section, we got one, two, three, four, and here's one of Jonna's uh, paper, five, six, seven. Seven things are attached to this one piece of paper. So you have to reinforce it or you'll be ripping them out. You know, you'll be ripping them out if, if you don't. So most of the pages are multiples. Here are the fairy tale project we were working on one day. We listed all the fairy tales. Uh, I have my Inktober listed in here. And then look, Jonna. See, I added a bunch of this, <laughs> the vintage paper. I just had to do it. So this whole book is one big flip and flop out. Look, so Jonna sent me these little vintage faces, these little vintage heads. <laughs> yeah, I did use a lot of uh, washi on this. Look, Jonna, I cut out one of the little heads there and put it over the top of Jane's girl. So this is the kind of stuff, you know, you can play with, right? So this is all attached to one piece of paper. Here was, oh, this was one of our combined things that we did, a, a list of combining things. So it, I've used this. This is a Jana paper. This is a Jana paper. These are ledger papers. And so it's just fun to have all kinds of, it's kind of like a glue book, sketch book, swatch book of a little of everything. Here's my Inktobers, all the creatures. Last year I did movie monsters. And uh, I know I've, sh I've flipped through my movie monster Inktober project. Uh, and there's video on that too. So you can see all this just flips and flops and ideas. But again, I did reinforce all these pages. All right, so here are my, um, these are the current, that's one of the, it's not this one, it's this one here. These are the swatches from this book, uh, that stack of uh, paints, see? Another paint chip for a um, tab. And see, this is that small Jane book. That this is this. I think this is her newest one, and it's a little book this big, and it's all of prompts and inspiration, like this one. Invent ten new words that describe you. You know, just little prompt prompt books and inspiration. So you use this book. There's another one. <laughs> Use this, this kind of book like this to just throw in ideas. I put one of those yo-yos um, here, Jonna. There's the little card here, the old maid card of the artist. And it's just fun to have lots of flaps and flips. There's a coaster. Here's another Jane, um, Jane prompt. This one says, circle the words that describe your style, your personal style, your home, your art? Are there any ways you describe your style? Any other ways you describe your style? So I'm just going to read this just so you get an idea of what kind of prompts Jane gives you. Funky, flamboyant, colorful, edgy, boho, sophisticated. Um, what is that? Oh, demure. 
minimalist, <laughs> contemporary, clean, bold, rocker, punk, vintage, relaxed, dreamy, romantic, organic, graceful, delicate, tranquil, unconventional, tasteful, flashy, glittering, natural, mysterious, enigmatic, abstract, flowery, ethereal, poetic, timeless, monochromatic, rustic, sunny, classic, eclectic, global, cheerful, cozy, retro, sporty, chic, glamorous, whimsical, exotic, dramatic, elegant, sexy, playful, down to earth, crafty, or feminine. So she gives you these things to think about what's your style, you know, and then she gives you some blanks where you can add some more. Again, this is another page from her book. Here's one of Jonna's um, uh, fabric sample things in there. <laughs> and the again, these are all these are all on one piece of paper. See, there's like maybe eight or ten different flips and flops on that one piece of paper. So make sure and reinforce it. I can't say that enough because you'll be turning your page and it'll just come right out in your hand. Um, <laughs> what do you think you are? You're on the edge, Fran? <laughs> Again, another um, paint chip. Lots of places to doodle, write down your ideas, and just have a play. Have a play. That's what Jane would say with her English. Well, she's Australian. When she asks, have a play. Uh, Vicki uh, Bootens, um, those little sticks that we just got last week at uh, Tuesday morning. So, again, lots of, there's one of these little, John, I stapled it in. That's on a piece of cardstock. So, you can just add so much stuff. You can add so much stuff. John is probably recognizing all the stuff that I've glued in here. See how you can flip and flop. <laughs> uh, yeah, see, Cavagrace is a great way to use her books. Mine just sit and I never use them. Exactly. Even if you just take the books apart, punch holes in them and put them in a binder. Even if you didn't make, you know, extra flaps and stuff. Even if you just cut her books apart, punched holes in them. And one of her books has uh, the brown craft paper, the watercolor paper, some color book pages. One of her books has all types of paper in it. And, um, and so if you just punched holes in it and put it in a binder and then just add other things. Oh, yes, I'm using these kits. Look, here's some more pages. Um, these are the two. This is the pin page, the Sears Roebuck, the pin page, and the watch page. But you see, I had to reinforce these. These especially were real delicate. I probably will end up having to attach these to another page. Uh, lots of washi tape. So all this, all this free space here can be paper from Jana. All this free space can be used to write down notes and ideas and collect your ideas and the Society of Idea Collector notebook. You don't have to glue every page to another page and make multiple flaps. I just like that. Right? I just liked doing that. Here's a page where we did some slapping, smack and dragging with some ink. Here's just a page, a page of scrapbook paper that's uh, cardstock weight, which is nice for heavier things. Like I stapled this on here. Um, those pages are from 1931, the, the Sears ones. Yeah, see, I just like it. Now, this is one of uh, Jane's swatches pages, and then this is some of my own inking. And, you know, I mean, look, this was the leftover. This didn't fit in here, so I cut this down. But I didn't want to throw away that, so I stapled that in there. <laughs> There's an envelope there that Jonna was in one of her kits. And, again, guys, if you, want to, if you want any of her kits, go to Preppy Crafty Girls Etsy and look for her kits. This is one of her swatch, uh, uh, fabric swatches, wrapping paper. There's another one of those yo-yos, Jonna. Vintage uh, wallpaper. So you see, it's just, uh, it's a little everything. So I love my Jane and Jonna book. 
because it's got now it's got vintage stuff in it too. Plus, you know, I'll just throw in ideas. We're going to come up to some more. There's one of the little Valentines. We're going to come up to some of my other swatches here in a minute. So here we go. These are um, Artigo paint pens, Posca paint pens, Artisan, Posca Metallics, Artisan, uh, not to be confused with Arteza. Artisan was, I think, uh, where do I have some? Well, I don't have them right in front of me. Um, they were an off brand. All those are on one pack, one page. Piece of cardstock here. Some inking, some sprays. And you can go in here and just spray some inks on all these blank pages. If you don't like writing and journaling on blank pages, then go in there and throw spray some inks on them. <clears throat> Did it get dark or are we okay? It got a little dark, I think. The light changes with all these uh, color changes. I don't want to get it too dark. Uh, I have the 1927 Sears and Robot catalog. It belonged to my grandparents. Aw, see, that's special, Judy, because it belonged to your grandparents. This stuff that I'm showing you that John has, she goes to the flea market. And that's, a, that's one of the things we've talked about before. You go to the flea markets and you see all these photographs of people and you wonder, you know, why are these photographs in a flea market? Was there no relatives? You know, says the person that has 25 three ring binders in the other room of her grands, you know, scrapbooking, <laughs> you know, and I, and I always ask myself, don't y'all want any of these, these scrapbooks with all your photos when you were kids, they don't want them. You know what they do? They come in with their phone. They take pictures of my scrapbook pages and Snapchat those to their friends. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> everything's on the, you know, electronics. So here's just different flips and flops. And here's where I did some, um, some of the uh, Jane um, mermaid markers, more mermaid markers. No, this is the watercolor. This is the gold set. I wrote that up there. And then I just practiced some of my uh, brush brush lettering. I practiced some of my lettering by writing the names of the colors next to them. So these are some of her watercolor sets. These are her mermaid markers here. And one of the best things that I'm going to show, we're going to use these today. And I'd say this all the time, the Crayola Super Tip Markers. I have them in the thin ones and in the fat ones. Let me grab one of those. <clears throat> okay. The Crayola Markers are water-based. You can use them as watercolor. And they're also just awesome because they don't bleed in most. I've, I don't think I've ever had them bleed through. Not even on a Bible page. These don't bleed through. But what you can do with them is use them as watercolor. Let's see. Do I have? Okay, here. You can put them down. If you don't have to have a palette, you can just use a piece of plastic, a piece of plastic packaging. You know, you can do the same thing. Just a piece of something non-porous. Okay. And then you can take your water brush. And use it as a watercolor. These markers are so versatile and they're so inexpensive. Um, I think a pack of 50, a pack of 50 colors is like $10. Okay, so you can swatch it and then you can also use it full strength for darker. And then you could also bleed that. Now, when you let me say this, when you start doing using your water brush and this together on a paper, that might bleed. But it's not the marker that's bleeding, it's the water that's making it bleed. Okay? But when you just use your markers or use it like with just minimal water like this, it won't go through. Okay, now this is on a heavy paper, so it's obviously not going to go through. 
I mean, you can't see it anyway because of the other paint, but it doesn't go through. Um, but when you start doing a combo, when you start doing like lots of um, marker and water together, that's going to start peeling your paper, depending on the kind of paper. Okay. Depending on the kind of paper. So, but these are awesome. Crayola, you can use these as watercolor. Now, don't do a fine painting and, you know, it fades in five years or something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just for you to play with in your journal. Okay. So, these are um, some of Jane's um, set here. And uh, so these are the names that she gave them. So I wrote them out with uh, with a brush pen. There's some more. There's some more. So this is kind of my, you know, combo swatch journaling book. Here's some yum yums. This was in Jonna's thing, but I thought yum yums. This is yum yums to me. <laughs> this is yum yums. Oh, so anyway, again, a whole stack. Let's see how much is on on this one pack here is all attached to one piece of sketchbook paper. All right, so here's my Arteza watercolors. Then here's the, um, these are the gouache, I think. These are my Arteza gouache. Then these are my Black Widow pencils. This is the skin tones. Then over here are, these are the Cobra set. This is the Scorpion set. And this is the, what set is this one? Spider, Spider set? I forget, but anyway, I've got all my, uh, all those swatched out. Here's some Zig Clean color. Here's just some different things. And oh, this was testing on different. Um, this was the Hobby Lobby um, something. And uh, so we did a watercolor paper test. We compared the watercolor brush markers, the Arteza watercolor uh, markers to the Zig, the flexible, that was a Hobby Lobby, and the Super Tips, and the Color It. So we we're comparing uh, five different water-based um, markers. Did you, oh, see, did you ever try a Black Widow on a color book? I did, but I don't know which, I don't remember what book it was in. I don't remember right now, Pacola. I know I need to use them more. It's just, you know, so many things and so, not enough time. I want to use, I want to, I do want to um, swatch out the super tips. Now, one of the things about the super tips, and that's probably why they're so budget friendly, there's no name on them. So you swatch these out. You don't have any name or number to write down a reference with it. You just have, although the marker colors are fairly true to color, but there's no name or number on these. Okay, uh, the, I'm going to do all my Arteza real brush here. So again, uh, I started doing some Posca testing here. Oh, this was to test some Poscas on paint. And um, this was Posca on black paint and Posca on, pa on paper. Um, just shows you that black paint acrylic paint is awesome uh here's just some more tests we did these on a show one day um okay these are these are tests these are some of uh jane's i think these are jane's colors i wrote that over here i think but i tested them on actually tested the skin tone the skin tone colors i think it's this set here these colors some of these as skin tones as you can see i do use these <laughs> i do use my supplies people i do use my supplies <laughs> super tip caps have holes on both ends i always get the wrong one <laughs> yeah um so i tested those out on here and i wrote the names down coconut tiki redwood you know all the different names so that's there. There's a little John a card there. So yeah, I'm just it's just my fun journal. 
It's a fun journal to play in. Uh, I love this uh, music sheet from John, The Days of Youth. The Days of Youth, people. This kind of book will keep your days of youth. <laughs> I know I'm missing some chat uh, comments. Uh, so, hi, Mary, Judy, Dee Dee, the Sears catalog, 1610, 11 pans of watercolor was only nice. Oh, that's awesome, Judy. You got a score. Gail, Karen, Darla, Jasmine. I know I'm missing people. At, thanks, everybody. So, again, lots of, you know, and the backs of these, remember, they have prompts on them. So, you don't, you don't know something to do, just find you a prompt, start writing, drawing, sketching with the prompt. So, yeah, there's <laughs> the vintage kitchen, Donna, um, card there. Oops, I kind of used, I kind of tacked that down on there. Okay. <clears throat> Another vintage thing, more vintage things. This John has sent to me was sewn on there. Added that. So you can just add whatever. Okay, so here's my Arteza paint pens. I had done this in this sketchbook, which we I want to work in sometime today. Uh, this is my... Um, we did, you remember we listed all these things by color last week. This is my uh, Canson Mixed Media. Well, I had done all my paint swatches of my Arteza paint pens in that book. Well, I cut it out. I cut it down and cut it out and put them in here. So these are my Arteza paint pens, which are like the Posca paint pens. Put that in there. So, Yeah. Isn't this fun? I'm mean, I don't know how much fun you're having, but I hope you're having getting ideas. There's one of the little cards that um, was it Molly that sent me? Who sent me these little cards? Anyway, they're uh, playing cards. And Hubster goes, "I need a bookmark." So I gave him one of those. If y'all, I think it was Molly. I don't remember who sent me these. Anyway, um, she sent me four of these, and I, I gave one to Hubster to use as a bookmark because they look like our cats. They're all white cats. Who sent me that? Was it you, Molly? Was it Ann? Anyway, I have four of those, and I we're, we're using them as bookmarks. Here's the little little um, vintage things here. What do you think, guys? Isn't it cool? It kind of cool. Vintage uh, pat pattern. Hi, Shelly. Dee, does that mean I have to take my Home Depot Home Depot? swatch book apart <laughs> just add stuff to it or start a new one <laughs> yes hubster um well hubster doesn't wear pajamas but that was nice of you <laughs> uh oh see i just ripped this out see this was attached here i added one too many things i gotta add a little more uh, washi on that one <laughs> you gotta let me get some you got to uh Make sure your washi, and it also depends on your washi too, guys. Some washi's better than others. Ask uh, Faithful Matt. She's the wash. We call her the washi queen. But anyway, I'll put some extra, extra reinforcing on there. See, I don't. I just just add some more on there. Just add some more. Oh, that one. That one's a little. There we go. <laughs> That's what's fun about it. Uh, I just had so much fun a couple years ago when we did those. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And everybody, um, everybody liked doing, working in, um, what do you call it? Um, file folders. And Kathy Arbor, uh, Kathy, are you still here? Kathy Arbor is going to be doing a new, whoops. I got my little reinforcer stuck there. Um, Kathy Arbor is going to be doing some more projects in file folders. So if y'all like doing... Uh, how much does this weigh, Bonnie? Um, I don't know. A couple pounds, I guess. I don't know. I didn't weigh it. <laughs> and hi, by the way. So she's going to be doing some more file folder uh, prompt uh, fun. So if you all enjoy doing things in file folders, Kathy's starting some new projects. There she is. Kathy Arbor. So follow Kathy Arbor. She's going to be doing some new projects So um, with file folders. I'm not going to do it because i got so many projects I'm already doing. I'm not even hardly working in my comp book. 
I am behind in my comp book. Where's my comp book right here? I had it right here. I had it out. I was using it. Now, where did I put it? Here. Is that it? No. What did I do with my comp book? I had it out. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh. No, that's the other comp book. That's the idea comp book. Where's my comp book with, uh, well, now I've got to go search out. Oh, here it is. It doesn't, it's because it doesn't look like, it's because it doesn't look like a comp book on the shelf. Look. <laughs> so I do have some pages done in here, but uh, I need to, I need to get back to work on my comp book here. Um, 2020. Shelly, oh my gosh, Shelly, if y'all have not seen Shelly Aldred's, I think I'm saying that right, on Instagram, she's rocking the comp book. Um, so here's how glad I am for Friends song. That was one of Jonna's things. Another piece of cardstock. Here's some more, um, just all, you know, little, little stuff. Just keep, it just, it's a book that just keeps on giving. <laughs> It just, it keeps on giving. I'm trying to kind of flip quickly because there's still quite a bit back. Here's some more swatches. Those are my metallics. Jonna. <laughs> Here's uh, swatches. Uh, these are the wrappers off of the metallics. So I kept the wrappers. And then here's some more flips and flops. Whoops. Oh, I glued that down. Oh, that's that's another metallic set there. So all of Jane's books and other things. Swatches. And I have blanks, you know, so I have lots of blanks to add things to. More swatching. I really don't need to add any more pages to this. Because there's plenty of blank pages just to find a, play, a page to swatch on, inks, try color combinations, uh, try color combinations on. Let's get past some of the blank ones there. This is one of the Jonna papers here. Look, Jonna, here we go. Here's uh, those, those uh, cutouts. I cut them out and put them on here. <laughs> Uh, oh, Aunt Beck's Creations has a comp book too. I don't know. I have saw saw hers. Let me look. Um, Mary said, "Is she on Instagram, Mary?" Let me go to IG. Let me just put in hashtag comp book. I, I'm sure I follow her. Maybe it would be better just to look for, is it, I don't even know what she goes. What's her, do you know if she has, what's her Instagram name, Mary? Oh, there's Shelly, uh, Pacola just put in Shelly's IG. I'm waiting for Mary to say, because I don't think it's, um, Aunt Beck is not her name, is it? On. No. What's her name on Instagram? You're not sure? Yeah. Okay. I can't look her up and show. I was going to share it, but I don't, I don't know it either. Um, so I don't know if I've seen her stuff or not. So again, painty pages. Getting toward the back here. So this is, this is my Jane, um, my Jane, um, and Jonna journal. I say that because I've added Jonna's uh, paper stuff, but, um, just all kinds of, there's my Georgia map that was in one of my paper kits from Jonna. So anyway, it's just a fun place to add stuff and do swatching. You can do your paint testing. Like, you know, do I want to use teal, orange, and lime? We'll come over here on a page and see, you know, test it out on one of Jane's coloring pages to see if you like those color combinations. Okay, so I'm going to move this journal off and show you a couple other ones we're working in and then I thought we would maybe do some sketching don't forget guys um, thanks for the thumbs up by the way don't forget to um, put it in caps if you're talking to me 
All right, let's move this out of the way, this out of the way, take a sip of juice. Ah. Becky Carm. Okay. Oh, okay. That's her name. Okay. Let me look, Mary. Becky. Okay. I am following her. It is Aunt Beck Creations. Oh, she does have some. I think this is it here. Yeah. So, yeah. Here's some. Oh, hang on. So, it is Becky Carm with two R's, C A R R M Collie, C Macaulay, M C A U L E Y. So, yeah, this is one of her. She had another one that looked. So, she, she, yeah, she is rocking the comp book. So, is she doing fruits and vegetables or healthy? She may be doing both. Healthy. Oh, she has some other ones in here. She has some mandala type things. It, it, she kind of, it reminds me of you, Mary. I mean, the um, the type of stuff she's adding to the pages reminds me of you. Uh, you you pack a lot in your pages, Mary. And y'all fairy follow Mary. I'll go click on her name too. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, exactly. Share you can share uh, your channels. Your, your YouTube, you can't put a direct link. Only the mods can do that. But you can put your IG name. Just put IG and put your name there. And people can follow you. I don't mind sharing. I don't like spammers that come in here and, you know, but I'm I'm big on promoting people. So you don't really have to, don't be a fear in that. Okay. So now the other two books I'm working on, and I haven't got that far in these. And this is the kind of stuff I do in my spare time. So I went through and found a bunch of, um, some was left over, some I added. Now I'm not going to show you every page in these because I want to kind of do it as, as I go. But every page has something cut out and glued on it. Every page has something cut out and glued on it. So you can see. I'll show you the couple pages that I've worked on. And, and again, guys, these are the kind of things that I never really feel like are done. I can always go back and add more stuff. So after I got all this, these are the little, um, these doors right here. These doors are Katherine Anderson doors. These are Dina Wakely. Uh, this wasn't it, but I pulled out a stencil and started stenciling. Then I started using color pencil to start blending it. So I add a lot of things, but it, it doesn't ne necessarily mean it's done. I can always go back and sometime I think, oh, this needs so-and-so on it. So I'll go back and add something else on it. But uh, anyway, so this is the first intro page. I showed this page to y'all last week, and it didn't even have the doors on it yet. So you see it's always evolving. Um, hi, Scoops. Let's see. Gary said, I did just pick, popped up on my, my support. Stuck in library waiting for, okay. Well, thanks for popping in, Gary. And good morning. Hope everything's going well for you. Um, Ian said, I had spam last night, fried in garlic and butter. I do like, I do like the occasional fried spam sandwich with mustard, just fried spam and mustard on bread, Ian. So I do like the occasional fried spam. <laughs> This is the Arteza one, Kathy. The Arteza, this one was a came in a twofer. This came in a two set. This one came in a three set. Janet got one of these. She got a watercolor one. This is not the watercolor one. Janet got the watercolor one. Um, so that's just that. And then I've got, did I start a couple? I've got, see, look, it's in progress. I'll, I'll show y'all a couple. These, these don't even have paint on them. That's just all paper. <clears throat> this stuff I'm showing you now, <clears throat> it's just paper, no paint yet. Let's see. Just paper so far on, most, on all these, really. Unless I show you otherwise, there's no paint on them yet. Oh, somebody said some journal. I journal a lot. It helps my mental health. Yeah. Hi, hi Hannah. Yes, I love to, uh, any kind of art journaling. Um, 
And you got to be careful not to get the matte medium on the edges. Let's see what else. trying to find something that has a little more none of these have paint yet this is just this is all just paper and washi tape this one's not oh yeah there this is one of uh faithful mess's washi tapes that came on um came on uh one of her packages so you can see this is how i start a world building what's your trick to keeping the matte medium smooth um what do you mean keeping it you mean so there's no wrinkles is that what you mean, Kathy? No wrinkles? Or uh, or do you mean the grittiness of a matte medium? I use golden matte medium. There is no grit. No grit at all. Is that what you mean? Or do you mean, um, or do you mean, you can get them all kinds of places, Vonnie. Um, I think this was out of a pack of, um, of uh, origami paper. This was out of a pack of origami paper. Oh, so the, yeah, you've got to, when you put your matte medium down, the trick is mashing it like crazy with a card. Mash, mash, mash. You're going to get every bit of excess matte medium will come out and you, you just scrape that off, scrape that excess off. It's it, the trick. And a couple of mine are a little wrinkled because I didn't mash them down enough. You have to use, it doesn't matter how much you use, Kathy, it's how much you scrape out. I mean, I'm mashing like crazy, getting every bit of excess. Now, when you do that, uh, let me warn you, if you're using fashion magazine, fashion magazine pages, if you do what I just did, you're going to take the ink off. You'll take the ink right off the fashion magazines. you got to be careful with fashion magazines. They're the thinnest. Hi, Jean. Scrape, scrape. Yeah. What you do is you're scraping so much that any excess that's underneath is what coming out from back. And then you just pick that up, put it on a, you know, put it on X, you know, scrape it off on something. And then you can always pick that back up if you get a lot of uh, scrape off. But that's the trick. That's the trick. But I mean, I've got a couple, all right, like right here. Look, I didn't quite do enough right there. Can you see that wrinkle right there? I didn't quite uh, smash that down well enough right there. So you do have to look at it. Um, I do, Hannah, I do have almost all my journals are on my YouTube channel. Go into my mixed media journal or art journal playlist and they're all in there. Yeah, they're all, I, I, I show, I repeat a lot. Now, these are new. I haven't shown these two right here that I'm showing you. These are my on, newest ongoing ones, okay? So I haven't really shown these yet. So I do a lot of things when I'm, people go, well, how do you decide what to do? What One of the main things that I decide on a base on gluing just random images down that I'll then turn into a world is color. Like, like, look, this one's blue and brown. This one's pink and purple with a little touch of blue. But look, this one's orange and blue. This one's green and orange. I mean, there's other colors in there too, but the main colors. I, I glue things down by color, not by theme necessarily, because I can build a world out of anything. Well... <laughs> that sounded funny. Um, but I can turn this into something regardless of what it the, the images are. Now, when I'm doing my altered books, my abandoned books, I've already got a theme. So that's what I also tell people. If you don't know how to collage, you've never collaged, you've never tried to collage, start by altering a book because you've got something to start with. Bye, Joe. You have something to start with. Thank you, Hannah. When you have an abandoned, like the abandoned, you know, places. Let me grab it again here. Or abandoned, which one was it? Abandoned place. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you have something like this, you have something to start with. You're not starting with a blank. You're not starting with a blank. You have, let me find a, let me find a blank page that I haven't done something on. 
Okay, here, this is like some statues. I haven't done anything to this. You have something to go from. If you're afraid, you don't know how you're going to do something like this. <laughs> you know, I didn't start by opening a book one day and do this. You know, I've done hundreds, hundreds of pages, guys. So, you know, <laughs> it's not like I just uh, opened a, up a book and just did that one day. But the other method that I use is called picking colors. Look, blue and orange or teal and orange, pink and purple, um, purple and blue, green and what, well, you know, greens and blues. This is all brights. So if you if you pick a color, look, see everything has color, um, a color uh, theme, green and orange, yellow and, you know, mostly yellow and maybe pink. So everything's got some kind of a color base. You're on your seventh journal? Good. Hannah, do you post anywhere? Do you have a YouTube channel? I'm not familiar with your channel if you do. Okay. Or, or do you have an Instagram? Do you have an Instagram, Hannah? I'm waiting to see. Okay, so and then this one was this came in a two's first set, but I do notice that if I don't work front to back, back to front, the spine will start to warp. If you just work front to back, your spine's gonna shift. You need to make sure and work some in the back, some in the front, some in the middle, so that your spine does not warp. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing her answer me. Hannah? Oh, Hannah. <laughs> I want to see if you have an Instagram. I'll go and look at it. Bye, Kay. All right, I'll try to catch it if she says. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Izzy, Izzy chat, Izzy. Easy? Is it easy? Easy. Yeah, because you will warp it. I'm, I'm, I've got to, let me take out the. Hannah, I have a YouTube channel, but I don't really post. Well, girl. Girl, get on it. <laughs> At least, do you have Instagram? You need to post. Okay, so here's the little one I'm working in. And uh, so this is the start. This is the first page. And again, it's not done. So after I finished adding some pink and yellow, some washi tape, then I, I like that door right there. So you can see I haven't even painted that door in yet. I just slapped it on. Same for this. That's slapped on. The, these little pieces, I thought it needs some more black and white. So I added some black and white. So it's not painted in yet. But that doesn't stop me from, oh, well, let's turn the page and do the next page. <laughs> See? So I just keep working. Oh, okay, Hannah. So this is essentially the same thing. It's just smaller. See, now I just started this one. There's nothing really going on much except that I like that door from uh, Catherine Anderson. Uh, let's see, what else do I have in here? This one doesn't have quite as much stuff. But again, look, color, greens, black and orange, teal and pink, blue and red. And I'll make something out of this. So color, uh, uh, just a color page will inspire me to make something out of it. Oh, uh, you put, Jean. When are you going to watercolor again? Or at least steam your knitting, Jean. <laughs> Pink and yellow, blue and green. So, and then this one I started doing, um, you know, the space, uh, like Canaveral. <laughs> so I found this turtle. I painted him in and I add water splashing and it's orange and blue. And um, then the little... This little piece right here, I don't know if you can tell, but that was ends right there. See where that square, maybe you can see the square underneath. A little bit of a, a little bit of the palm tree was there. All the palm tree out here is pencil. Pencil goes over paint. 
So I could I use color pencil to extend all these palm leaves with pencil because pencil loves flat matte acrylic paint. Uh, Jesus says, well, working on getting my cleaner here to help with the room. She's sick right now. Okay. All right, Jean. Um, red and black and yellow. So um, here's another one that uh, just... You know, just uh, painted all this is painted in. That's all paint. All of it's paint. I started with this mountain and this thing of rocks. And it's not done, but I don't care if it's not done. See, a lot of people go, oh, I can't move on. I can't move on till that page is done. That's okay. You know, that's fine too. It's however you work best. But I can go from page to page and work here and there. Look, see, look, I started scraping some paint on up there. You know, it doesn't bother me to go from book to book. doesn't bother me to tear things out. If I like this page and I needed this in something else, I just rip it out. doesn't bother me at all. I can deconstruct a book in a heartbeat. Y'all see me? Well, that's what I did with the Jane books, right? So anyway, um, that's all I've really worked on in these two so far. And uh, I do like that they have the straps that are pretty tight because uh, my books get pretty fluffy. So uh, what did Pacola say? Um, left you one look in the mirror watching Monday. Oh, wow, Pacola. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so again, that I'm working in those two. I'm going to quickly read our weekly here. Um, I showed this earlier. If you want to see a flip through, this is the only new book that I have to uh, show today. So if y'all want to see a flip through that, I did that earlier. Uh, I did show that I made prints of my, um, I made prints of my uh, Blue Jay poster. So it turned out really, let me show you the full poster. So here's the original size, the original size. Then I did eight by 10 and then I did a five by seven. So yeah, well, that turned out pretty good. Did that over the weekend. And that, let's see. I did my happy mail, which I showed. Everybody that supported my channel this last month is gonna get a print. And um Where's my photos here? So um, I did this. Uh, I did that on Saturday. So there's all my. <laughs> I got my happy mail done on Saturday. It took almost all day, but that's y'all were worth it. Y'all were worth it. I love you guys and appreciate you so much. So I don't mind, you know, the work. Okay. So there's that. What else did I do? Okay. So let's go ahead and. Uh, I'm looking at all my happy mail, showed all my happy mail. Oh, I, all right. I am going to do two giveaways today. Now, it won't go out. I'm going to go the post. As soon as I get done streaming, uh, before I go to Janet's show today at 1, and Janet comes on. She's in the chat there. She comes on at 1. Uh, I've got my post office is closed from 12 to 1, so I can't mail anything. But I want to get all that stuff I just showed you in the mail. Um, so I want to be there at 1. Uh, so the things that I'm going to give away today will not go out today. They'll go out probably Friday or Saturday. But I thought I'd give away a couple of things. And let's see here. Let me find, hang on. I've got a couple treats here. All right, so first off, and this is this is has nothing to do, this is just a giveaway that I'm just doing because I love you guys. It has nothing to do with the 25K subby. That will be next week. Again, thanks for all the thumbs up. Um, I'm going to do a giveaway next Monday. Next Monday will be the one where you leave a comment. Again, you can leave a comment. All the, leave me as many comments as you want. But the one for the giveaway, for the 25K subby giveaway, will start next Monday. i got to make sure I make myself a note. Let's do that. Okay, next Monday. Next Monday is where the leave a comment for, um, for a giveaway. Leave a comment. 
And then what I'll do is on Wednesday, you'll leave a comment next Monday. And then on Wednesday, we'll do a drawing for the 25K subby, um, 25K subby uh, giveaway. And uh, well, I won't tell you, I won't talk about it anymore till then. I'll leave it as a surprise. So this doesn't have anything to do with that. But as y'all know, our faithful mess gave us multiple copies of handmade collage. I did a flip of this last week. So uh, if you want to see it, and Colleen's been using this. She actually, <laughs> I think I made her. Colleen was not using this book until she saw me show it. And then she started using it. She's got some, let me go to her. Wait, I got to go to her IG now. So uh, Scrap Chick Colleen, she's been using this book. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Colleen. I don't know if she's still here. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. Uh, let me put in Scrap Chick. Um, <laughs> she's laughing. So yeah, she started using some of the images out of it. Now, here's a perfect example of how you don't have to do her... Um, uh, her, the girl, the uh, what's her name again? Uh, Psycho. You don't have to do her project to use the stuff. She gives you the stuff and as a project. But Colleen has been using. She's been using the the stuff and making her own collage, right? So I was so proud of you, Colleen. <laughs> well, go get some sleep, Hannah. Three in the morning. It can't be, oh, three, oh, it's 3 p.m. there. I was going to say, it can't be three in the morning. You're only six hours ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all are six hours. I, well, is it five or six now, uh, Ian? Now that we have the fall back, I think it's your six hours. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, or five hours. Okay, so Hannah says it's 3.20, so it's five hours. Y'all are five hours ahead. Yeah, it turned out really good. So I'm so proud of you, Colin. So we're going to give away this, this. And then I'll do a separate giveaway. I was going through, I'm trying to, as y'all know, organize my art space, go through my old magazines. And I've, oh my gosh, can't even tell you how many magazines I have. I pulled two of cloth. How many of y'all remember cloth, paper, scissors? This one is from 2005 and this one is from 2006. So I'm going to do two separate giveaways. I'm going to give this away. <laughs> it's got something in. Oh, it's got the card to subscribe. You can't subscribe anymore. They, I don't. They're not in. They don't have them anymore. Anyway, so I'm going to do two giveaways today. I'm going to give away these two, and I'm going to give away this. Now I've got to qualify this, guys. I hate to do it. If you are international, if you are international, and and you are you can be in the drawing. I will send you a print, some art, or something else. I cannot send you uh, books. It's a minimum now, guys. It's a minimum of $25 to send this international. One thin, I remember I tried to send composition books. One thin composition book, $25 to mail. So I can't do international book giveaways. Now, I will make the exception, let me say this, next week when I do the um, Jean Journal and the giveaway next week for the 25K, if you are international and you win, an international wins that, I will pay the $25 to ship that to you because it's the 25, it's the 25 subby, 25K subby giveaway. And uh, so I will do that. But other than that, guys, I want you to be a part of the giveaways, but I can't mail books international. It's just, it's redonkerous. I'm in Georgia, just Ju Josie. Yeah. So I will send you um, some prints. I'll send you some, you know, I'll send you some art, um, but I can't do the books. And I hate to do that, but I just, it's not, it's not wise. It's not that I can't afford it. I mean, I, it's expensive and I don't want to spend it. But the thing is, is um, it's not wise to spend money on some old magazines, you know, or one book and spend more than the book is worth. You know, it's not worth spending $25. You know, I'd, I'd rather send you a gift card or something. You know what I mean? Okay, bye, Scoops.
So I'm going to do give these two giveaways. I wanted to clarify that again because it's not that I don't want to do internet. I don't mind the shipping part. It's the expense, guys. And it's just not wise to do that. All right. So I'm going to read these and then give me some thumbs up, guys. And we'll, if we get up to 150, because we have over 200 people. So if we get over 100, when we get over 150 thumbs up, we'll do the giveaways. Okay. Bye, Crystal. Thanks. Okay, yeah, I got to get your kids to school. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read. I'm going to go ahead and read the next um, few pages. I mean, few uh, prompts. So we've been reading A Thousand and One Ways to Be Creative, A Little Book of Everyday Inspiration, Barbara and Kipfer. And I've been reading a double page once a week. And then we move on and move the little thing over to the next week. All right. So here's today's inspiration prompts. If you get number 44, if you get stuck on a project, write a review of your work. Examine the steps taken so far. The steps still need and the steps still needed for completion and the changes you'd like to make. Then get back to work. 45. Think about how a more creative approach at work can benefit you and your employer. 46. Toy with a new idea. Examine it from all angles and see how its definition changes. 47. Make a list of creative skills you want to learn and a list of those you already have that could use fine tuning. 48. Don't beat yourself up if you don't have enough time to spend on your creative pursuits. Keep showing up and take satisfaction in your perseverance. 49. Self-development is key to satisfaction in creative pursuits. So there's our little weekly um, inspiration prompt thing there. Okay, so that's our 1,001 ways to be creative. I leave that book right up here so we show it every week. Okay, um, I'm going to then, after I do the giveaway... Oh, we went over 150. See, it just takes a little prompting. We're going to, um, if y'all remember, last week we did, uh, we made lists of things that were yellow. We made lists of things that were orange, red, blue, pink. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to sketch, and I just used a regular pencil. Um, a blue lead will not smear as easy, but it doesn't show up on camera for you guys that easily. Uh, so what I'm going to do, though, is sketch. And use um, use my uh, super super tip markers to uh, color them. And now I'm not going to say I'm going to do all <laughs> hundreds of them. We're going to do a few. And uh, so I thought that uh, we could just show you can do a little sketch, a little play, a little inspiration. So we're going to go through the colors and do that. Okay. So here's how the giveaways work. We're going to do this. Will be giveaway one. And we're going to do it at the same time. We're going to do them both at the same time. One and two. And again, if you're international and you win, I will send you art in lieu of the books. Okay. So the first person closest and the second person closest. So what we'll do is when in a minute, <clears throat> I'll tell you to put in a number between one and 100. Doesn't matter if there's more than 100 people here because it's the first person. The first person closest to the random <coughs> random.org, which let me bring that up here. Random.org. The first person closest and the second person closest will get these. Okay. All right. So well, that's not random.org. What the heck? Let's go to, let me put it back in again. Hang on. Random. Okay, there we go. So we've got random.org. Let me turn the light down on it a minute. Okay, so it's going to be between 1 and 100. The first two people. Oh, wait a minute. That's my granddaughter. I got to answer. Oh, she just liked some of my. Okay, have to answer the granddaughter. Um, all right, let's go back here. So it'll be the first two people closest to whatever random. <laughs> whatever the two the two numbers closest without going over it's without 
going over. Okay. So when I type in go, put in a number, one number only. Let me say that too. One number only. If you put in multiple numbers, you automatically disqualify yourself. Okay. Um, oh, thanks guys for watching. Okay. All right. So when I type in go one number only between one and 100, there we go. Now you can put in a number. Okay. <laughs> go. And then we're going to do some sketching and, um, yeah. Make sure you have live chat clicked at the top. If you don't have live chat clicked, you will not see all the numbers. You're only going to see top chat. So you have to have live chat clicked at the top to see all the numbers. I can see them all. My mods can see them all. But you may not see all the numbers if you do not have live chat selected. Okay? I try to make this as fair and as many people as I can do it for because, you know, I like doing giveaways. I like doing giveaways. All right. So we got a troll there. Those mods, you mods, you're just like snapping turtles, baby. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can't put more than one number. I think I said that. All right. I'm going to count down. I'm going to count down. Get your numbers in because once I type in stop, the numbers no longer count after I type in stop. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, <laughs> get them in, 2, 1. Okay, there we go. No more numbers. Okay, so let's see what random.org picks. The first person closest gets this. The second person closest gets the two cloth, paper, scissor magazines. Here we go. 52. 52. The person closest to 52, the first person, and the second person closest to 52. Okay? Okay. So we will let my mods look. And again, if you're international, I'm going to send you some art that I can package reasonably priced. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I'll let my mods go um, look through. Hi, Jamie. Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi, Dada. Dana Dada. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh. You did make it, Dana. You were the last number that made it. <laughs> but you had number six. I don't think that's going to count. I mean, it's not going to quite make the cut, Dana. <laughs> but thank you. And good to see you. Good to see you. Okay. So let's see what my mods, um, my mods say. Everybody can look, but I'm, I wait for at least two mods to tell me what the, uh, who won. We're waiting. We're waiting. I'm waiting. Do I need to go look for myself? <laughs> My mods are looking. The two people closest to 52 without going over. <clears throat> and then we're going to draw. Then we're going to sketch. Okay, Carol who, Holly? I mean, I need to see I need to see two confirmations and I need a last name. There's multiple Carols. There's multiple <laughs> Okay, Carol Vick had 50. Is that the closest? I'm going to write them down over here until we decide. All right, Carol Vick had 50. It's the first two people. Okay, so who um, who was behind her? Oh, y'all had to refresh. Okay, that's all right. I'm waiting. If y'all need me to, I'll scroll too. Um, and Caroline McFarland had 47. All right, Janet said. All right, let's make sure. Caroline McFarland had 47. All right. All right. So those are the two closest. 
Now, who, are y'all international? I have to know. Is anybody international? Hi, Suze. <clears throat> All right. Well, I, you'll have to let the mods look, Shell. The mods said that Caroline was before you. We'll look. All right. We'll look. Uh, Pacola said you were the second person in uh, to have 47. Okay. Now I just need to know. I just need to check that nobody is, uh, yeah, Shell, everybody's saying you were the second person after Caroline. Okay, uh, all right, McFarlane is U.S. Okay, Carol Vick, you're good. Um, I mean, um, Caroline McFarlane, you're good. Carol Vick, are you U.S.? And I hate to have to do this, guys, but it's just, it's got to be my new rule. Okay, I'm waiting to see... Um, Okay, so they are both in U.S. Okay, so email me your addresses, guys. Here's my email, and I'm sure Bacola will put it in as well. Email me your addresses, and I'll mail these out, probably Friday or Saturday, okay? So congratulations, you two. Cloth, paper, scissors from 2005 and 2006. Do y'all want to look at one real quick? I'll show you one. Let's put this up here. All right, so let's look at the one from two. That let's look at this one because I like that cover. So I I'm going through all of my old. Um, I'm going through all my old. Um, yeah, after I put in stop, they don't count, guys. Numbers don't count after I type in. That's why I count down ten, nine, eight. Give you time to put in. So anyway, this one is from two thousand and six, and they're just so cool to reminisce in. But I have. Literally hundreds of magazines, guys, that I just can't keep. Hundred, I've got, I've got um, Somerset Studios from 1996. I have the first issues of Somerset Studio. <laughs> I just can't, you know. I got to start whittling down. Um, so, but look, look at this. Isn't this cool? Look, this is from 2006. Yes, thank you, Jamie, for reposting the rules. <laughs> so anyway guys um yeah look at this vintage textile flea market challenge isn't this cool guys so i love these magazines that's why i still have them that's why they're still practically in pristine condition but i just can't keep them all anymore so i thought i would share some of you what's this this is a just a, it was an ATC. I'll leave that ATC, blank ATC in there. I'll leave that in there. So, um, yeah, Carolyn McFarland, you're going to get those. All right. Um, Joan was no 13th person. <laughs> Guys, that's why I ask. That's why I always get two or three mods to look. We're not trying to, you know, we, we are trying to be as fair as we can. Okay, so that's going to go. Those two will go out. And thank you again. Faithful Mass for giving us some handmade collage books. Yes, yes, that is awesome. Okay, so what next? What next? Okay, so now we're going to go over here. Let me zoom in. We're going to draw. We're going to sketch for a while. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All right, so let's see here. Let's zoom in. Let's make sure we're... Okay, so here's what we're going to do for a while. And um, I'll let y'all kind of decide. I'm going to get some reference. Uh, I do not know uh, every animal. And don't let anybody ever tell you it's wrong to use reference. I don't care who you are. You know, go argue with uh, Salvador Dali and Picasso and Michelangelo. Go argue with them if you don't want to use references. Okay, so <laughs> I got to get that in there. So I did, a, I did a few, and I think I will just draw in pencil instead of blue line, which is normally what I would do for myself because it doesn't smear and it's lighter, but it won't show up on camera as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw with pencil. And when I draw with pencil, I just use these disposable paper mate, um, these disposable paper mate uh, 
technical pencils, but I do not use the red rubber eraser. That will leave red marks. Use white plastic. This one's kind of chewed up, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is somebody being, is somebody really being a, a problem, Jamie? Thank you for posting the rules, by the way. That's true. I don't have to do any giveaways for free that nobody pays postage with, unless how the goodness of their heart, like Faithful Mess. Faithful Mess sent me all those stamps. Thank you so much, Faithful. Okay. All right. So here we go. If y'all remember last week, if y'all remember last week, we did list of things that were different colors, like yellow, orange, red, light brown, dark brown, pink, coral. I think we had, I don't know, 12, 15 different, um, 12 or 15 different items. Okay, well, you know, here's the thing, guys. If it gets to be, if it gets to be complicated and people uh, put pitch fits about the giveaways, we won't, we won't do them anymore. And that's just the way it'll be. Okay, so here's the thing. Now, let me go over here. Um, so we will, I'll let you decide what we should draw. I've already got a, quite a bit on yellow. And I, I've got, I can do a double page spread. So if y'all have something else in yellow, we can go over here. All right, so here's what I have so far. Canary, a snake, duckling, seahorse, frog, fish. Because there are yellow seahorses. There are yellow snakes. Frog, fish, butterfly, bee, banana, squash, mustard, daffodil, lemon, buttercup, school bus, sun, post-it, sunflower, rose, taxi, caution tape, and pencils. And what we did is we wrote all these down and randomly picked things. We randomly picked things to turn into a poster. Well, I was already in the, in the um, space animal mode doing the blue jay. So we went ahead and because we picked a crab and a lionfish out of the random things and we picked teal and purple and I also threw in orange. Um, we ended up doing this poster. <laughs> And uh, it's not quite finished, but once I threw those little astronaut stickers on there, I threw these little astronaut stickers on there, I said, I've got to finish this now. So anyway, the reason we had these lists was because we were doing random things. We were doing random things <laughs> and combining them and picking so um, these are some of the things I just sketched out. A butterfly, a bee, canary, just some little canary head sketches there. A yellow, I don't even know what kind of fish it was, and a yellow frog. And what I want to do, though, is try to, as much as possible, we'll probably use some pencil as well. But for the base, main colors, I want to use the Crayola Super Tips because it's just a way for you to use... Um, it's just a way for you to use them, and they're so inexpensive. You get 50 colors for 10 bucks, right? And then I also have the, a set of the larger tipped ones, too. But anyway, so I thought we would do a little sketching and just a little, um, you know, drawing, a little color. Like, let me see here. Let me go to, let's go to this frog, yellow frog. I'm going to have to take my bracelet off because it's going to keep scratching on the paper. It just kind of does that, you know. Okay, so let's see here. A yellow tree frog. Okay. Um, Ian said, idea of a ref image, reference is to train your mind. To draw, I can, but it takes a lot of training. Yeah, I don't have anything memorized. I don't have this. I, I would not have, I don't care if I probably drew a frog a hundred times. I would not have a frog memorized. Unless you have a photographic memory, you're going to use reference if you want it to look right. You know, I mean, you could do stylized anything. I could draw a weird frog with this big eyes and huge hands, you know, and that's fun too. But if I want it to look real, <laughs> 
have to look at a real picture, you know, unless you have, uh, unless you have your own, you know, maybe you have an aquarium and you know what your fish look like. Good. <laughs> um, let's see. Lucy said she just ordered Nick love poster. I don't know what Nick's love poster is, Lucy. Um, but I, all the, uh, all the, what do you call it? Masters, if you will, you know, from Michelangelo, Leonardo, Leonardo went out and looked at trees and drew trees. He looked at dead bodies and drew dead bodies. He, you know, went into, you know, different medical surgeries and drew from life. Not that's something I want to do, but you know, all the masters draw from reference people. Don't, don't let that, you know, don't let somebody tell you you can't look at something and draw it. Who made that rule? Somebody that can't, doesn't even draw? <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean, Vern? Okay, so um, what I want to do is maybe color one here, just so, um, you know, so you can kind of get an idea, you know, of what we're going. Oh, Nick Filbert. Oh, coloring poster. Nick Filbert coloring poster. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> uh, Nick's the big giant poster that I have. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, that I'm coloring. Right. All right. Sorry, I did not I did not even enter my mind what that what you're talking about. But now I understand. Okay. Um <laughs> All right. So anyway, I just want to, we'll just do a little uh, play with this one because I have it drawn out. Then we're going to draw. So I went over here. I started on orange. I drew a couple of koi fish. I drew these with pen, with the orange pen. Here I got a, a clown fish I started, you know, a Nemo. Here's a little tiger. But uh, anyway, that's all I've done uh, as far as sketching. So because I, I wanted y'all to pick out what we're going to sketch. Okay. So, um, there's a couple things we can do. Let me get uh, let me get my tray. It's probably easier to see. All right, let me clean out the baby wipe here. So if you want to use your um, your your um, markers as a watercolor, so I'm just going to clean a little spot in my little. Uh, tray here and you can get these porcelain trays i got these at blick um you know now you do have to have it dry for the marker to scrub on so i'll get a couple kleenexes here so i cleaned it now i'm going to just dry it so that the marker will um release onto it okay and then let me get a water brush let's, see, let's get one with water in it let's get one that's not too old and flared What's in here? Hang on, guys. Oh, that one's pretty good. Okay, I gotta get some water in it though. Hang on, let me get some water in my water brush. Okay. And you don't have to use a water brush. It's just it's just convenient. You can just use your regular water regular brush and some dip it in water. Okay, is everything good in chat? I hope. Okay, so I just sketched them out here with pencil. Now, if you don't want your pencil lines to show very much, then take a kneaded eraser. Again, if I was drawing this for myself in, in another, you know, just sketching for myself, it, I'd probably do it with my graph gear with blue lead um, because it's lighter, but it won't show up very well for you guys. So I said, well, let me just go ahead and draw with pencil regular pencil trying to make it as easy that everybody can do it and i'm just going to pick up some of the graphite just so it's not quite so dark and you can kind of get rid of enough lines but i want y'all to be able to see it but i also don't want a bunch of lines so i think you can still see see how that kind of lightened it up so we'll use a couple different things we'll use some of our crayola super tip we'll put down a base here what the heck I must add something. <laughs> Let's get this. Did I pick a dud? Did I pick a dud? Is that not even? 
Okay, for some reason, this water brush is a dud. I don't know why. I've got multiples. Let me pick another one here. Okay, here we go. All right, so <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with that one. So you can use it in a couple ways. You can use it as, um, you know, as a, just a base coat, your, um, like a watercolor. Now, I could get out my watercolors. You know, I've got, you know, I've got tons of watercolor sets and stuff, but I want it to be accessible. Oh, I picked one of the, I forgot that the black super tips, if you ever come across the ones with the black super tip, they're scented. They're scented. And this, the yellow and the orange one smelled exactly like Fruit Loops. Have you ever smelled Fruit Loops? So now that I'm using it, I can. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to put a base here. And if I need a little more, I'll just put a little more out. I mean, you could go directly to your paper as well, but if you want that watercolor look. And these are very sketchy. They're not, you know, I'm not trying to do portraits here. I just want y'all to kind of see what can be done. Okay. So we've got a little bit of yellow on there. <laughs> it does. It smells exactly like Fruit Loops. Do you have these, um, Colleen? Do you have those, any of the black tip, I mean, the black barrel uh, Crayola Super Tips? <laughs> it smells just like Fruit Loops. I mean, exactly. It's like they use whatever they scented Fruit Loops with is the same thing they use for these. Uh, yeah, that's the difference, Kim. If you, there's the scent, the, all, like the red one is smells like cherry or strawberry. The green one, I don't even remember what they all smell like. But the yellow and the orange smell like fruit loops okay so now um let's put a little bit even though it's he's yellow i'm going to add a little bit of orange to this and make it a little bit darker yellow if you want to shade depends on how much detail you want to put in right so i just want to darken that yellow up just a little so i can add a little bit more shadow here And then you just, you use them just like you would watercolor. Just like you would watercolor. Can y'all see that? Yeah, it's showing up. <laughs> I don't know. These are, these are a few years old. I guess they still make them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they still make them or not. And let me kind of move it so you can see what I'm doing over here. Uh, if they make the scented ones, but they come in the, they come with. They come with the other set. I mean, it's not like they're sold individually. They come in the other set. And again, you don't have to use the super tips. You can just use some regular watercolor. But I wanted to show you all some versatility so you can do it yourself. And then in this case, uh, this is not a green tree frog, which they have. I think they have... Uh, I think they have a weird color green eye. Um, this one has like brown eyes. So we will get a brown super tip. I mean, you don't have to do only one color, but that's the base color of, uh, of the frog. And then I'll go in there with maybe some black pen or some pencil. All right, so there we got a little base coat down. <laughs> they still make them, Kim? Okay. All right, so now I, I want to uh, let me get my heat gun and dry that. You always want to make sure any water-based stuff is dry before you go over it with pencil. He's on some bamboo. Let's put a little green bamboo here. So do these kind of things, guys, when, you know, you're sitting around, you're watching TV, or, you know, if you want to draw from TV people or places, that would be a reference. Uh, if you're drawing, like, if you're watching the History Channel and you're watching 
you know, some uh, history culture thing. You know, get your sketchbook out and draw what they're showing. Just sketch it down. <laughs> I gotta tease you. Okay, let's uh, let's try that. And this is the strap, um, the the Canson mixed media paper, mixed media paper. All right, so now let's get some pencils. Let's get uh, yellow. Hang on, I gotta get some pencils. Let me just grab my little tray here, my little uh, silverware tray of pencils. Let's see, I'll go with that. We'll go with these three, and then if I want any, let's see if I have a little bit of greeny brown eyes. There's a little olive green. A little brown just you know we're just gonna play i'm gonna do this frog and then we're gonna sketch other things all right <clears throat> my pencil sharpeners all right so what's everybody else working on today or this week or over the weekend did anybody do anything creative artistic or you know, what did y'all do over the weekend? It's rainy today. I'm hoping it's going to clear up because I want to get my walk in. Okay, so I just got some pencils. And these are just Prismacolor. Um, you know, use what you got. All right, let's see. I think I need a black for his pupils. I have one sitting here. That's Black Cherry. That black, nope, dark brown. <laughs> I've got a black here somewhere. Here we go. Okay, so I want to get his little pupils in. <sighs> I'll just color them in solid, and then I'll do the highlight with the Posca. But if you want to maintain a highlight, then just go around an area where you want the highlight. Or just use acrylic paint to paint one in. <clears throat> um, Fran says, I just finished gluing a minty set of four pages for the crunchy little journal. What's minty? You mean the color? Minty? Minty green? Okay, do some sketching, Sharon S. Caroline says, Dee Dee, can you give me your email address again? Yes. Here we go. Anybody that wants it? Oops, let me click on the link. Oh, there we go. Pacola just put it in. Pacola's quicker than I can type it in. Thank you, Pacola. Um, okay, so let's see here. <laughs> Isn't he key already? Minty green. Okay. So now I might just take, um, let's take some yellow ochre and, uh, you know, maybe do a little bit of shading. And again, guys, you know, a sketchbook is just supposed to be that. It's for you to sketch in. You know, it doesn't have to be a bunch of, you know, like you're going to make prints out of them and frame them, you know, which that's fine too. You know, sometimes those things will work out. But, you know, it's to, it's to practice, you know, get some references and practice. Like, look, this bird right here. See, look, I did three little pictures of him because I wanted a close-up of his head and beak. I wanted one looking straight on. Then I wanted one with his body. Okay, so do a little bit of. Nice shading. Am I zoomed in enough? Can y'all see? Do I need to zoom in more? When I go to a draw, you know, I'm going to have to keep moving the paper. I'm going to have to keep moving the book around so that um, I stay in frame. Dee Dee, Crayola has new markers, metallic outline markers that automatically add the outline. 
Super cool. Haven't seen in store, just online. Oh, okay, Julie, I've not even heard of them. I've not even heard of those. I'm not a big metallic person. Um, I like to add shimmer, and sometimes I like to add, what do you call it, um, you know, glitter, you know, uh, uh, stickles to some things. But from one of the things about um, using metallics, they don't photograph well. You know, they don't photograph. It's a little olive green in there. Oh, uh, maybe a little light tan color. Let's see. It's a good blending color, too. Okay, now let's see. White. I'm sharpen my white here. Um, you have to do it for fifty years, then you'll get good at it. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I'm not exaggerating, guys. You'd be surprised. My people say I can't draw a stick figure. I can't do this. I can't. Well, when have you ever tried? Well, no. Do you practice? Well, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not saying about that about you. I'm just saying you'd be surprised at how many people want to draw and say they can't draw. Have you ever taken a class? Well, no. Have you done a life drawing and gone and tried to draw uh, from life? Well, no. Well, have you, you know, and what, you can't make people do stuff. <laughs> Well, you must be doing something if you're still sticking with some kind of art. What do you do, Fran? What kind of art do you like to do? <laughs> and I'm not saying that about everybody. I'm just saying the majority of people that, you know, say they can't do something, haven't put the time or the effort into it. Okay, let's see. I want a little bit of, let's go down. Let's put a little bit of a. bag under his eye there. And let's see, what else should we put? Let's do a little nostrils here. Whoops. Mash that pencil a little too hard. <laughs> there you go, Christine. All right. So I'm just going to spend a little minute on this little frog. Could have picked a canary. I don't know. Just any of them are. And, of course, the more time you spend, you know, shading and blending. And that's the thing about um, those of you that, that like to, like me, that like to do color books. That's another thing. Don't let anybody tell you a color book. That's not art. Let's tell them to pick one up and shade. Shade and blend some color pencil or shade and blend some paint. Don't let people tell you that stuff, guys. Don't let them do that to you. <laughs> so you get the point. I really, I did really rather good oil paints. <laughs> you got to find what you love. See, that's one of the other things. 
if you don't love what you do, you won't stick with it because you won't want to spend the time, the money, the years, the effort. You won't want to do it and, and can't blame you. Who wants to do stuff they don't enjoy? But, you know, sometimes you've got to work at it long enough to get to the point where you're doing something you like so that you will enjoy doing it. So, you know, it's kind of a twofer there. All right, so I'm going to move on. I just want you to kind of see how you can start, um, you know, getting in the details with your pencils and, my, and uh, paints or your, um, what do you call it, uh, marker. You're uh, using markers as a watercolor. And because they're only like 10 bucks for 50 colors, it's a good place to have, um, to have the, you know, something just for your sketchbook. Again, I wouldn't tell you to use Crayola markers as, you know, a finished piece, you know, or anything like that. But to use it, to use them as a, uh, to sketch and practice your sketching in. <laughs> Nanamo. Hi, by the way. <laughs> All right. So there you get kind of get the idea. I, again, I didn't even finish it. It's not done shading or anything. I just want you to kind of see the idea. Now what I'm going to do is go back with my pencil and do some more sketching. And I'll let y'all pick. Where'd my pencil go? Where's my plain old pencil? What do I do with it? Well, you know, I got more if I have to dig another one out. I'm sure it's here. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> So uh, stuff yeah, yeah, you know, it depends on times in your life too. You know, I get people ask me, well, when did you, when were you able to do art full time? When I retired from raising my kids and working <laughs> in my forties, then I was able to spend full time and I, sp and I spend a lot of time. I spend, you know, most of my days sitting here at my art desk. Um, you know, and doing stuff for you guys and doing YouTube videos and trying to encourage y'all to start to try to do something, you know. So, um, but the thing is, is all my life, regardless of where I work, I've always had an art space, even if it was just an art board, you know, um, uh, a board that you sketch on, you know what I'm talking about, there's a name for them, but you know, board with the clamps on it. Even if I only had a board in the corner of a room where I could sketch and draw or a sketchbook. And you got to remember, guys, up until, uh, let's see, I never even went to an art store probably until I was in my 30s. Maybe late 20s. I'm trying to think. It would have been in Alaska. Let's see. Probably close to 30 before I was ever in an art store. We didn't have art stores. <laughs> you know, they just, you didn't have, and you didn't know order online. You know, you didn't order online. Yeah, it's a big clipboard. That's, well, that's kind of what an art board is. And, you know, um, you know, and we moved so much. I've moved 30 times in my life. And growing up in the military, married the military, we moved all the time. And I always worked. I always worked when the kids were growing up. And uh, so, um, you know, I was always changing jobs and just, you know, trying to um, and just trying to uh, sketch and draw whenever I could. And color pencils were always um, the easiest thing to have. They traveled. You could take them with you. You know, it's not like oil paints and oil supplies that you can't, they won't, let, the military is not going to let you pack linseed oil. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And so color pencils were always something, and I got good at that because I was, I used them so much. And Janet too. Janet loves her color pencils too. Uh, let's see. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, move on. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So these are some of the things off the yellow list. Here's a couple of things off the orange list. 
Okay. Um, if y'all want to pick something other than, you know, these three things, or we can go on to something red, but there's orange birds, um, or orange fish. Like I drew some koi fish here, cat, uh, I did a tiger, a pumpkin, a clownfish. I started drawing some clownfish. I just did one. Let's, um, let's go to, um, maybe another side angle. Um, And y'all can tell me which of the things you want me to draw. You know, and I love drawing. Y'all know I've drawn here before with just using a ballpoint pen. I decided to try to do this just to show you pencil and, you know, inexpensive color to show you about sketching. But, you know, you can draw, um, you can draw with, uh, let me see if I can grab something here. Um, Uh, maybe I'll show y'all some pen and ink in a minute. Uh, see, there's my ink tober. Let me move that. Okay, so here, this is just done with um, a ballpoint pen. I mean, a biro, a big, 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 a big pen, you know, just a big black pen. And uh, so you can just draw with things like that. There's a lemur on this side. Um, it's, it's good practice to try to draw without using a pencil sometime, just because now this has pencil and pen. So you can, um, practice not, um, practice not, uh, what do you call it? Um, erasing. So you can do both things. What do we got on this side? Some bunnies. We did these here. Again, these are pen. We did a little of pen, marker, pencil, a little of everything. And see, look, this is all, this is super tip stuff here. That's super tip uh, markers. Some octopus eyes and sketches. The, these are all done with just um, a big pen. I'll show you some more in a little bit, but let's go ahead and just draw some pencil. Okay, so let's do another, let's like do another clownfish over here. Like maybe, you know, maybe there's one um, right in here. <clears throat> kind of maybe this one's kind of going behind this one. And I like them because they're black, white, and orange. And so Nemo-ish. Nemo-esque. <laughs> nemo <laughs> Now I want to hear, you know, I don't know if you, uh, on the mummy, Emotep, Emotep. Nemo-esque. <laughs> nemo <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then he has another little fin coming out here. So you can just kind of sketch. And then you can always go back and erase lines. Try try when you're drawing like this, and it, and it really helps to practice this. Try not to erase while you're doing it. Look, see, I didn't even pick up or pick up my pencil. You know, I just kept moving it around the page. You can go back in and erase things out. <laughs> You can erase things out after um, after you uh, block them in. Like, you know, here's this fin here. And then his body goes back up over there. I, I won't put him in the tiger there. But, you know. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, what? all right. Let's move on to another page. And y'all tell me. I'm going to let y'all pick now. Okay. So, now we're on red. Don't pick a crab because we just did a crab. But other than that, I'm going to read these off and y'all decide what you want drawn. A cardinal, a rooster. And again, there's red frogs. I don't want to draw another frog. I don't want to draw another fish. I'm just going to kind of pick. You can pick one of these. A cardinal, a rooster, a ladybug, cherries, uh, beets, a lobster, 
Um, I don't really want to draw a traffic light or, a you know, a target sign. So what? A, pick one of those. Pick one of those. A cardinal rooster, a ladybug, uh, some cherries, beets, a lobster. One of those. Pick one of those. I'm not going to do the little red Corvette. <laughs> I'm trying to get a few things done. Okay, so I'm trying to get a few things. So uh, somebody picked a cardinal. Okay. I was hoping someone would pick a lobster, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I was hoping someone would pick a, a, a lobster. Okay. <laughs> See? I like the lobster, too. Okay. So y'all are want, y'all are liking the uh, lobster, the ladybug, and what was the other one? A, a rooster? No, lobster, ladybug, cherries. Okay, well, we'll go with the ladybug, the lobster, and the cardinal. Okay, so let me find a cardinal here. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's have one looking at you. Well, I'm like looking straight at me. Oh, this one's kind of looking at toward me. Okay. And I'm trying to not, I'm trying not to draw too big because I want to try to fit as many things on, you know, a page as we can can okay so here we got here's his head up here look i'm just going to kind of show you here all right so here's his little fat little body now his tail is going to go off this side. okay but here's his head okay so then you just start like something like this and then you you know start whittling it down And the little eye there is kind of looking. They have black around the eyes. And then they have black around their beak. It's that little head. And then you can just go in there and do like we did before with the uh, marker, the marker and the, um, what do you call it? Um, watercolor. And if he's on a, some kind of a stick or something, and his little feet will curl around it. It doesn't have to look exact if you're not doing somebody's pet lobster with facial personality. <laughs> we did that before, Judy. We've actually done some different. Um, we've done some different uh, funny animals like that. Okay, so you can start with something like this, and then his tail, of course, would be going over the words there. But just so you can kind of see. And then let's just do a couple things. Let's get a black marker, black super tip, and red. Let me do a couple things here. Okay, let's do uh, where's my water brush? Could probably do this really nice and black with just straight on marker. But okay, let's do a little shading back in here. And then let me where's my oh, I thought I had I thought I had a Kleenex there to clean my brush. Then just going right over the sketchy bits. Like it just looks kind of cool just to even do that. And of course, you got to let it dry to do another layer. If you want it darker, you've got to let that dry or hit it with the heat gun so you can add more uh, 
shading to it. All right, so let's go ahead and dry that real quick. But if you just start with some kind of base, it just kind of takes the fear away. It just kind of takes the fear away. Let's get uh, let's get Tuscan red and red here. All right, I'm not seeing anything in caps, so we all good. Y'all have to put it in caps if you want me to. If you're talking to me. Oh, thanks, Teresa. I'm sending you, Teresa. I'm sending you a cardinal picture. I mean, not a cardinal, a blue jay. Okay, so let's just see. Let me go ahead and I want that black. I want that black to be really black. Where's my black pencil? Here we go. <clears throat> and maybe there's a little shadow right up under there a little bit. Maybe, maybe his little feet. <clears throat> okay, Tuscan red. I'm not going to get too much into the weeds of detail. I just want this to be like quick little sketches. I told you how I got Cam. Uh, unafraid of drawing in public. Um, I, I, I'm thinking it was at the aquarium was the first time, I think. But we'd go to the aquarium and we'd go to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the the museum. And we, I'd take him in our sketchbooks. And I think it was the very first time. And I think he was... I'm thinking of 12, 11. I'm not sure how old he was the first time we went to draw at the aquarium. And um, this could be a little sadder, I think. Um, and I had him, we were going to draw in public with everybody watching, you know, a straw. And he said, oh, I don't know. I'm kind of embarrassed to draw. I said, just draw. Just start sketching and drawing. And so as he was doing that, people were stopping and saying, oh, my gosh, that's so good. You know, and just seeing him draw. And uh, so that gave him confidence. That gave him confidence to keep drawing in public. <laughs> see, I see little characters in here. I want to turn them into something, but I'm not going to. Oh, uh, let's see. Judy said my previous comment was leaning toward art on lobster. Like Jen Davin. I don't think I've seen Jane Davenport's lobster lady. Look, Dav uh, I'm not understanding, Judy. Jane Davenport lobster? <laughs> Choose whatever based on... Um, based on... Um, the color of whatever we're drawing. All right, let's see. A lobster. Oh, let's see. Let's draw one. Let's, I don't want it straight on. Let's do one like at an angle maybe. This one's kind of curled up. Well, we could do a couple different ones. Let's see. Try to stay in camera here. Try to re-chat. Okay, so this one's kind of curled. And depending on how much detail I want to add to it. Okay, so here's his body here. He's curled. He's curled up. And then his little thing. And then he's got his claws coming out this way. And he's got another one coming out right here. He's coming out this way and then comes around this way. He's got his big claw here. So there's there he is. He's done. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Let's see here. They're angry looking. When you look right in their eyeballs, 
they're kind of angry. He kind of has a little, some kind of little weird mouth thing. And then they have their antennas kind of coming out like that. And his, he's curled up, so his body's all like that. His legs over here. He's got a leg coming out here, leg coming out there. And again, try when you when you if you're out drawing in public, try to see if you can um, get the essence of what you're drawing, or if you're you know if you're just drawing from TV. You know, I do a lot of drawing from TV. Um, let's make a space in between there. There's other claws coming out around this way and then coming around this way. You know, a little rounded. So just get you some sketch in there. In there. He's like I said, he's rolled up like a like a pill bug. <laughs> oh, let's see, Didi. Would you? Be, oh, I missed it. Would you be angry at what? Would you be angry if people were always trying to put you in boiling water? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they know that, though. I don't think they actually know that. And he's got these little whisker things, you know, and his eyes. I mean, he's like, I could put that eyebrow thing right there. See, that's more like he looks angry like that. You know? <laughs> and then their legs are back in, in here. He's got a couple legs. They always look like alien, you know, or like... Um, the thing, you did you, anybody ever see? Oh, I'm sure, but lots of y'all did. You know, those legs, those creepy kind of legs. Anyway, all right, so we'll move on. We're going to draw some other things. All right, let's see what's on maroon. Um, yeah, nail polish, blood, wine, raspberries. We could draw some raspberries, I guess, or we could just move on to the next color. We didn't make we didn't make extensive list. Arachnid, yeah. I don't think I ever saw arachnid. I've seen some of those cheesy 70s and 80s movies. I don't know if it was actually arachnid. Um, y'all saw that. Oops, oh, I gotta go on to what did I say I was gonna do? Oh, cherries. Did I say no raspberries? Um my Inktober, I did uh movie monsters and I tried to draw uh, the ones that I drew on camera on um I tried to do them all uh with ink uh, this is not very interesting let's see maybe this one maybe that one okay we'll go with this I'm just going to sketch out some raspberries and I'll, I'll maybe do show you some inktober okay let's see so all right so we got a branch we got some branches here and then Maybe I'll draw them large enough so they have some detail. Okay, so we got raspberries here, and they have these uh, pointy um, toppers on them. This one's kind of facing me here. Let's do a little. I don't know if y'all are wanting to see more color. I didn't even think about maybe y'all want to have more color. The raspberries are not quite strawberry shape, but they're not. They're a little bit more. And you notice this stuff when you're drawing them. They're not quite strawberry shaped. Um, but they're not really round. Um, they're a little bit more ovaly. And this comes down here. We've got another one coming off of this side. It's a little bit in the back. And then they all have these. See, this, see, I'm thinking these look like horns. So I was trying to imagine things. So the raspberries have horns on them, you know. They have like they could be they could be antlers. They could be like devil horns. They could be, you know. 
hearing tina from Los Angeles, I was, oh thank you nanamo yeah okay so here's one of the things like when you have a highlight on something let's just try to do one okay let's um let's do some they're really more uh they have highlight they're dark, light and dark red so they're not really necessarily just one or the other let's just go ahead i'm just trying to do kind of maroon color all right so let's start with just doing this one here all right, so let's just say we're doing that one. Now we've got a little bit of black just to darken that up a bit. Okay, there. And then when we dry it, if I'm doing this as quick as we can... I don't necessarily want it bright white, but let's see if I can do this with a pencil. It'd probably be quicker. It'd be quicker with the Posca because you can tap out, tap it out the, where's my Posca go? Tap out the uh, brightness. Where'd it go? Where are you, Posca? Where'd you go? I know you're right here in front of me. There it is. So I'll, I'll just do this to kind of show you. Now, they're, they it might look more like a strawberry for a minute, but they're really, I just want a little bit of white where the berry you know how they're bumpy so they're little bumpy berries so i'm going to put some and it, i don't want it too bright if it was too bright i'd tap it out but i think my paint's not quite dry so it's kind of soaking up the did it get dark what happened there did we get dark um then you can take your pencils and where the white is you can like make the little Bumpy uh, go shadow under each one. And do a little. They're kind of almost like individual little bumps, right? And then down in here, it's darker. So I'll get my Tuscan red and then do a little more on this side because this is in the shadow. I'm just talking to myself, guys. This is what I'd be saying in my head. If you weren't here, I wouldn't be talking out loud, but I'd be saying this in my head. So this side needs a little more shadow and then needs a little more shading around the bottom there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd be saying all this stuff to myself, but not, not out loud. I don't talk out loud to myself when I'm working, but I, uh, I, that's what I would be saying in my head. <laughs> anyway, guys, all right, so I'm going to move. Oh, they do have little hairs, too. The little raspberries have these little hairs, so you could put these little... Um, I don't know if they're called hairs. Does anybody know the botanical name for the little... The little hairs that are on berries. Anyone? Does anyone know what they're called? Airy berry. Hairy berries. <laughs> oh, I gotta write that down. Okay, so we got a few more, got a couple more minutes. All right, so because I want to, I really want to get out of here by about twelve, so about twenty more minutes, because um, I got um, I got everything ready to go to the post office, but I want to be at the post office at one when they op reopen from lunch, so I can get back and see some of Janet's show. Um, whoa, here, let me go ahead, let me back out. I'll go ahead and show you some pen and ink. Um. So you can kind of see how small we were actually drawing too. See, when you when we're zoomed in, <laughs> I don't know. It got a little. It got a little dark. All right. All right. So. See what I got here. I just grabbed a handful of stuff. 
we'll show some of this pen and ink. Maybe I should do something here. Let me go back over to a, let's go over to a blank page here. Well, it's black. All right, here. Let's go to the black page. And I'll draw something just with a ballpoint pen in a minute. Just trying to do a little versatile. Let's just be a little versatile. And you can also draw with color, um, you know, um, color bix too. But I'm looking for my black ones. Here we go. But you can buy them in colors. You know, blue. There's blue, pink, green. There's all different colors of big pens, but we'll draw something in black. So let's see here. Lemurs. I showed that. I think I showed that. Octopus. These just came out of some sketch, you know, some just some uh, copy paper, probably. Some of these. Some of these are sketchbooks. Some of it's probably copy paper. And these are some, these are out of a sketchbook because I remember those doors. Some bees. I'm drawing some bees. Oh, thanks, Mary. Now it really needs some more, you know, detail in it. This is when we did Yorkshire. Some color swatching here. You know, we were doing something off of uh, um, prompts or something. Flying turtles. Here's our five second faces. Some roosters. <laughs> Bye, Joycey. Um, I really like these, though. I like the I like the colors. I like the colors in that rooster right there. You like the bees? <laughs> Here's a big big bee. I should do a poster of bees. That would probably be a cool poster, wouldn't it? I'm going to write and make a note. Do a bee poster. Now, now I love my animal posters. <laughs> okay, so maybe a bee poster. All right, where were we? Um, oh, yeah, back at the rooster. I really like the rooster, those colors in the rooster. And those were with super tips, super tip uh, um, markers. Some cows, some lambs. These are some other. That's um, uh, what you call it. Um, Jack Jack Kirby. I did that for a comic thing. So let me move these out of the way, and I'll show y'all my Inktober's. Let's see. Well, I'll show you. I'll sh I'll show them all to you because there's 31. I'll show you some of my favorite ones. Let's see. I don't know if the swamp thing made the cut. Did the swamp thing make the cut? I think it might have. Some of these didn't make the cut. You like the farm animals? Here's all my list. This is what I worked off of. This was my working list that I did for Inktober. This was what I worked off of. Okay, this is Gamera, and I'm not probably going to remember mine. Now, this was not in Inktober, but this was an old thousand that I did. Zira, Planet of the Apes, Predator, The Fly. <laughs> I like The Fly. I know they're kind of creepy, but uh-huh. There's a Bride of Frankenstein, Elvira. Wicked Witch of the West. I liked her too. She turned out pretty good. Gort. There's one of this one didn't make the cut. I didn't like uh, Christopher. Um, uh, what's his name? Anyway, Dracula and Poe. Poe wasn't part of it. Poe wasn't part of the uh, monsters. He's just in here. <laughs> There's, and I did a couple different versions of Frankenstein. There's one. Uh, what you call it? Um, the mummy. What's his name? Um, something. What's his name? Um, his name's escaping me. Oh, what's his name? Something Bay. Mm -mm. 
I can't think of it right now anyway. And some more Japanese monsters. This was my opening page for Inktober. Uh, Phantom of the Opera. Invisible Man. <laughs> They're all on my Instagram, guys. They're all on my Instagram, every one of them. There's, no, there's a Dracula there. That's a, uh, that, that one made the cut. Nosferatu. This one was really creepy. I really think he turned out really well. And these are all done with, uh, draw, sketched them with ballpoint pen, sketched with ballpoint pen, and then inked with the brush. This is brush ink, brush ink. So the darkest darks are brush ink, but they were all drawn with, uh, uh, look, you can see ballpoint pen. This is from uh, what's that movie? Um, he, I don't know that he had a name, but it was from a movie. I'm trying to look at my list here. What was his name? Uh, what was his name? What was the name of that movie? Well, I'm not seeing it right now. What was it? I'm looking. Oh well, I don't remember. Uh, he had there was a name. There was a. It was from a movie. I thought I wrote it on the back, but. And then this one I did uh, based off of um, Julie Topaz's boss. Was it your boss, Julie, that dressed up as a yeti? So that one, that was the yeti from Julie. Wolfman. Um, you know, Jason and the Argonauts creature creatures. And um, Cyclops. Here's another. And again, this is all, look Look how scratchy this is, guys. I don't know if you can see. Look how scratchy. That's all in ball, ballpoint pen. Can you see it? It's all done with ballpoint pen, and then I went back and inked it with the brush. I did quite a few of these on, I did quite a few of them, or at least a few. I don't know about quite a few, but I did a few of them on, uh, on the show there's king kong this is uh, the gargoyles do you remember the movie the gargoyles it was just on tv the other day or last week the gargoyles i don't know if y'all know who sven Gulli is he's our saturday night uh scary movie host creature from the black lagoon another one of the creatures uh and i have them all written down this is one from the Ray Harryhausen. Same thing. This is the Hydra, the seven-headed, seven-headed thing. And uh, is that it? Yeah. These, these did, those didn't make the cut. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> those were my Inktober's that I did this year, and this was the fifth year, the fifth year that I did Inktober. Five years in a row that I completed it. I've completed it every year for five years. Um, all right. So let's see. Let's pick up a ballpoint pen. Let's go to a blank page. Let's see. Do we want to draw a raven, a crow, a bird, a bat? How about a bat? What do y'all what would y'all like me to draw? Do give me one thing to draw with some a ballpoint pen before we go. Just to do something different. I was just wanting really to have some sketchy and different things for you guys today. Um Koala. Oh, I've done so many koalas. Y'all, everybody picks the same things. Y'all pick the same things. You did three years worth, Marion? Yay. Yeah, five years. I don't have time to draw a dragon, Mystic. <laughs> I got 10 minutes. Uh, a pig. All right, I'll draw a pig. Okay, let's draw a pig. I'm going to draw a oh, wait. <laughs> All right, we'll do we'll do some. Uh, let me get my pen going here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna draw a pig. <laughs> I 
was going to draw y'all a pig butt, but that's okay. <laughs> if this is an adult, wait, wait, where's, I did my Gumby. I did my Gumby. I guess I needed it because see, this is, this is an adult Gumby. So we need to do. <laughs> not for kids all right let me let me seriously let me, let me find a little cute let me just find a pig <laughs> we have to laugh here come the cats okay let's just do a little pig all right let me let me let me get me some more space. Oh, there's there's a couple of cute little baby pigs. Let's let's look at these. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, let's see here. All right, here here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sketch with the. This is just with a ballpoint pen here. Cats are into something. Oh, I know what they are. They're into those treats. Oh, this really needs to be longer. His snout needs to be longer. Let's make the snout a little longer here. They're into, they're trying to get their toys and their treats that Sharon sent. What the? You did. You got your treat. I mean, you got your. You got it out of the box. All right, here. Let me pull one off. Let me take off the plastic. Hang on. I'll throw it for you. Let's make sure there's no plastic on there. Hang on. Okay, here. Come on. There he goes. <laughs> he might bring it back. I don't know. <laughs> You like pigs? And then I got one facing us here that's kind of like. How many of y'all, and I say this every show because I, I hope y'all are watching it, uh, either Portrait Artist of the Year or the Pottery shows on BBC. Well, actually, they're on uh, they're on uh, YouTube. Um, if you just put in Potter of the Year and if you put in, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Portrait Artist of the Year 2020. Y'all need to watch those because they're really good. This one here is kind of flopping over like this. <clears throat> Pigs make your heart melt. Aw, that's cute. Don't want it to turn into cow eyes. You can make their little doe eyes too cute. This one's ears flopped over this way. Well, anyway, guys, they're <laughs> some little pig faces. <laughs> Yes, they're on YouTube, Dana. Da da Dana. Yeah, they're on YouTube. Just look up Portrait Artist of the Year 2020. You can go back. They have other years too. I think they're up to week six on Portrait Artist, and I think they're up to week seven or eight on Pottery. The Potter of the Year. Yeah, look those both up. So yeah, they're they're awesome to watch, guys. They're awesome to watch. 
And this one's little body here is real. Got to make them look fat enough or they'll look like little cat, baby cows. You know, they'll start looking like little baby cows if you're not careful. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I'm going to head out. I'm going to head out and uh, hopefully you all like the little stance there. This actually little ear could come up a little higher like that. See, I'll sit there and look at it and I can fiddle with it. And you can also go in there and add color and stuff. You know, their little eyes are kind of droopy looking, kind of like this. Little bags under their eyes. <laughs> oh, those pigs made your day. Oh, that's good, Tori. Here, take take a take a screenshot, Tori. Take a screeny there. There you go. Gra grab a screen. Go grab a screeny and go finish it. Go color them, guys. Go finish drawing them and color them. There you go. Draw, grab a screeny. Here, let me let me brighten it up. Let me brighten it up here. There you go. There you go. Grab a grab a screeny and then go go color it, Tori. Wait. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a good day. Don't forget, Janet comes on in an hour. I'm going to be late because I want to get to the post office. Um, but um, don't forget, she comes on at one. I have no idea what Eileen is going to boss her around to do. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. And Shelly, keep up the good work. I showed your uh, comp book 2020. I showed your comp book um, that you're working on on uh, IG. All right, guys, y'all have a great day. Thanks so much. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Thanks for the, we made it over 25K um, in subbies. Thanks guys for all the thumbs up. Leave me a thumbs up on the way out the door and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. And at other people's streams, but I'll, I'll be back on Wednesday. All right, guys. Bye-bye.